welcome to session number 23 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria! Ah! If I actually yell, my mic just, just shuts me up. Your microphone <laughs> has like a noise gate that works in reverse, and only yeah. that it's a it's a gate that only blocks out very really loud noises. But yeah, hello, welcome. Um, hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, I I I hear that people have already cried before the session. <laughs> It's too early I have for to crying. Get it out now. <laughs> oh, buddy. Uh, I hope everyone is well and that you're all hyped for today. Uh, as we jump so right hyped. in with Dennis's <laughs> recap. Hmm. Do you know what, Windsor? Do I know what? I, I feel like since we've reached the twenties, mm -hmm. that I should set a new bar for summaries, right? Okay. Yeah. So I have decided that I'm just gonna rebel, not do the summary, and push <gasps> it onto someone else. Oh. Mm, let's see. Who could I pick? Who could be perfect? Ah, I know. Since I am his favorite person of the group, <laughs> he wouldn't take it too bad, right? Uh, wait. Uh, Dennis? No, I'm not doing your recap. You <sighs> cannot make me do that. Wow, Sid. Really? My heart is broken. You are the reason I just went from lawful good to chaotic evil, and you know what's happening. <laughs> hey, you! New kid! <laughs> oh, uh, me? Yeah, why are you looking so funny at me? Do we have a problem? Dennis, I've been here for like six months. I don't really think it's fair to call me yeah, the new kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now while I finish my just newly arrived fresh delicious pizza, you go continue the summary for me, okay? <laughs> chop, chop. What is happening? <laughs> uh, okay, I guess I've been hazed into doing the summary. Uh, but it's... Okay, uh, good thing I keep extremely thorough notes at all times for every session for just such an occasion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as I said, these are my notes slash stream of consciousness. Uh, could be maybe interpreted as a TLDR. Uh, Talix and Nind, heavy sexual tension. <laughs> Need place to sleep. Brooke knows a guy. Innkeepers supposedly isn't racist. Weird. <laughs> Dump truck Drake Hotel ran by a Canadian cartoon character. <laughs> Brooke gets special treatment. Seems kind of racist. Woman looking for Furbog, a healer. I thought Brooke was the only one. Am I racist? Gnomes <laughs> suck. Carlos <laughs> Mora, doctor for hire, tomorrow. Uh, mail system sucks. Uh, font found? F font of knowledge spelling is dumb. Uh, <laughs> so Sergeant Acorn reporting for duty. Fairies are dumb and racist. Stupid glasses. Uh, Tekka says some crap about dreams and sky stones, whatever that is. Uh, Meta shamed for my old work when I was racist. Uh, got fern reproduction info, sent findings and hopes of money. Found signs of animosity between the gods and between the Jig Council members. Hmm, valuable information. Found unknown story about the fox tricking the wyvern to get Vakanoth's knowledge for. Uh, no real info in the library about Golborgok. Weird. Uh, Talix looked for smut. No smut. Weird. Uh, interrupt Mumbo Jumbo because money. Yep. Uh, group decides Simlay Lawn as base of operations, the home of my people. Uh, group decides to find slash buy flowers on the way to slash from the dreaming tree soon slash not soon. <laughs> uh, new digs, no problems. New night, new me. Uh, soundproof rooms, kinky. <laughs> Aeronova disaster countdown, one month away. Uh, plans to accompany Talix on his journey involving the Ayatara Va. Uh, the draconic badonkadonk is popular, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Talix reclaims his seed from Brook's bosom. Cough. Nice. Phantom Hideout, Alchemies and Alcohols, a Kickstarter Wizard College, Pontifex Future Student, <laughs> uh, ran by Altos, a beefcake gnome, boycotting immediately. Uh, gnome is racist against Ladarians, calls them annoying, also an alcoholic, typical gnome. Uh, Talix Moira, Doctor for Hire, today. 
Uh, bread vendors got poisoned with rotten cough stuff. Spooky. Probably racism. Uh, leave city towards Dream Tree. The end. Oh, and right. not Jamuel solved the tiefling curse. That happened. Or didn't. <laughs> Alright, you know what, Matt? No, I actually kind of feel bad and go back to lawful good. Since next Sunday is your special day, I will take care of the summer then. Oh, you're gonna make it up for me for when I'm not here. Yeah, of course. I think if you apologize to someone, it has to be while they're around to count. But you know what? I'll I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Cause I'll probably be in the stream. Oh. <laughs> oh God. No, I need an apology. <laughs> <laughs> what happened last session? <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just now, let me go over my notes mean? again for you. <laughs> <laughs> we began with Talix I and gather we really tension. covered everything and, there. And I... Talix and Brooke's sexual tension. No, no, Pip, cover your ears. Of, like racism and sexual tension. Uh, You're not just, old enough to know normal. what smut means. <laughs> yeah. Soundproof You'll kinky room. when you're older, Pip. Yeah. Inside the draconic badonkadok. <laughs> Or the dump truck drink. What was that? The name. <laughs> dragon wagon. The dragon I was, wagon. I didn't finish watching the episode. <laughs> <laughs> What's a draconic batonka dog? Our inn is dragon called wagon. the dragon wagon. And I oh. think I took up a solid 20 minutes of the session making fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I decided that the, the symbol, the sign for the inn, and it was just like the a dragon like cheekily looking backwards over its shoulder with just this massive ass. Uh, this huge dump truck, this badonka donk on this on this drag. Of course oh, that's Brooke's like that. choice of in. Yeah. Of course. I'm sorry I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Who do I give the inspiration to? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's definitely not. How, right. and someone was clearly lazy. Uh, that's definitely what happened there. How do we yep, spell yep. badonka donk? <laughs> you know what? I would love just for your best interpretation. <laughs> okay, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna spell it, but yeah, that's, that's badonka donk spiration. How would you spell it in there Italian? Yes. Exactly. Okay, this works. <laughs> Badonkadonspiration. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's actually right. <laughs> it is. Hey, yeah. I passed the test. <laughs> I'm from Oklahoma, so badonkadonk is part of my native uh, vocabulary. So I'm glad uh -huh. that you didn't misspell my dialect. Um. Oh, what a beautiful badonkadonk. <laughs> That's my alarm clock sound. How'd you know? This better not get me banned from Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let me try. I think. No, nope, I still think live. We're still several notches below hot tub streams, so we should be fine. Hey, <laughs> we can only go up from here. <laughs> it's not official, but Donka Dong stream. <laughs> what is the sea of chaos if not a cosmic hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay, so, right. um, yeah, you have begun uh, traveling to the west. The directions you have received to um, the Tree of Dreams have been, have uh, come from many sources and they've all been vague. Uh, all you know is that it is somewhere to the west of Simulianon, one day, two days away, perhaps merely... One day if you march like a gnome. And they're very <laughs> short, so I think we can at least do that. <laughs> Perhaps merely however long it needs to take. As you are traveling, um, and you abandon the road, you... Um, ooh, 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 wait, here it is. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong notes. Uh, great start! <clears throat> uh, as you arrive uh, in an area um, filled with, uh, with farms, and you travel past them until the point where you... Uh, the wilderness begins again, and there is a single sign. Um, I wouldn't want a little... Uh, it's uh, it's pretty new. Um, it hasn't had time to to, um, uh, to be weathered. And uh, 
it contains uh, warnings in uh, Plurnan and uh, Elvish and Sylvan. Um, each of them in uh, each of them uh, reading, uh, translating to roughly the same meaning. Uh, danger, do not proceed. Yeah, that tracks. Well, sorry, gang. It was a fun adventure while it lasted. I don't think there's anything here we can't handle. Right? <clears throat> I guess it's a little rude on. to just ignore the signage. We should just make sure that we don't go too far west. We don't want to run into, like, some strange machine. <laughs> oh, well, you mean like all of the times that we've run anyway. into strange machines? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm assuming that one will be bigger, right? Well, I'm not to toot my own horn, but if I discovered their allergy to thunder magic, it seems to be fairly effective. We find a big one, this is a room for experimentation. Do you proceed? <clears throat> yes. You ignore the warning, leaving a sign where it is and pushing beyond that. Um, where you find uh, a gentle hill, uh, uh, grassy, covered in flowers, uh, that welcome you towards uh, uh, towards the horizon. It's an open area and the wind is uh, light and pleasant. It feels just slightly cold. Um, you walk for about an hour, you rest your feet, walk for a little bit further, and one of these uh, short uh, brief rests that you take, uh, um, which one of you... Um, uh, Tekka, a bit out of curiosity and a bit because it's uh, it's been a little while since you guys checked on uh, on Jamuel, and almost mindlessly you open the book. Uh, um, he just greets you with an with a hello, uh, and flipping through the pages, you realize that there is more in it than there used to be before. Not writing addressed towards your group, or not writing that is about your group. Uh, none of the adventures that Jamuel has been uh, painstakingly chronicling ever since you found him, but uh, information plainly and uh, uh, plainly presented um, to to the reader. You've seen you've seen bits of this knowledge before, um, stories and information about Ladara and its people, and it seems to have uh, filled in a little bit more. Uh, your group proceeds to learn the information I have shared over Discord. Wait. <laughs> Is this uh, so? We're still on the march right now, or yeah. It's just okay, it a little just break a, a while break. you're still, yeah. Hmm. Uh. Oh, that guy did not take you for the reading type. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. These pages have changed. Look. You pass the book around, <clears throat> each of you taking a few minutes to absorb the new information from its pages. That is a lot. Uh, Jamie, you care to explain? And all of this, uh, basically like this whole Ladarian races thing just appeared into the book, right? Uh, part of it. 
part of it was already there before. You have already seen it weeks ago. But yes, the okay, okay. The rest of it was in there uh, yesterday. Um, you flip to the last pages uh, of the book, where normally you, uh, that is where you actually interact with Jamiel, uh, and the ink forms into into words. Just a simple question. This whole bit about the tieflings? There seems to be a redacted piece. Uh, poorly redacted. What do you mean, how you found it? Did you not write this? Wait, like, there is... There's writing on the pages, but it is not on the pages? Like, this book was full before, eh. Uh... This complicates things. <clears throat> well, based on what we see is that this time he probably remembers more, right? So, unless you can tell us more than what is written there, we have to wait. There is a uh, talk of you discovered an answer about the tieflings. Uh, I seem to recall a certain individual who had a question for you about have you found a solution. Uh, stars in her eyes back at, uh, I believe it was Cleon. Uh, does, is, do you remember? Is this what she was asking about? getting weird vibes off of this uh, Tekka, is this are you okay? I doubt the words written many of the writings I've read 
as a child for a lie. Wait, what what was what was written? I don't understand. The words speak of a curse that have been mentioned again and again in my time living. I cannot Jamil, do you do you know how to make these things appear? Like, did something trigger that, or? One moment. Jamil. <laughs> oh. There, that's a lot of fence here. Ooh. Parchment. <laughs> Is he a middle page writer? <laughs> Well, it's crazy that when we see him writing, it like starts in the center and then expands outwards. I can't. <laughs> it's, it's sorry. That's not how it actually Magic. looks. No, it's cool. I like it. It's like, very not normal. <laughs> and Journal Fleetfoot is also very not normal. <laughs> Wait, so these boots about the tieflings, and uh, I guess like a meta question: Are they actually like strike throughed? Um. Yeah, it's like smudges. It's readable, uh, but there are okay. it, it, there the are like multiple like lines. Uh, yeah, there's multiple lines written over them. It's not like they, it was an attempt to hide them. It's more right, like, like an attempt to like scratch out a mistake. Uh, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, oh. like this isn't making it to the finished cut kind of thing. Mm hmm Okay, okay, okay. So it was it was purposely scratched out by the original Jamiel, supposedly. This isn't just like a, a way to convey it being hard to read. We should oh. tell our audience what that actually is. Yeah, right. I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't want to jump in on that. Eh. This is uh, a little, a little, little bit in the middle lines. of the like a description of tieflings and what tieflings are and where they come from. Um, there are multiple chapters that are about various races, native, uh, uh, various humanoid species native to Ladari, and there is a chapter about tieflings. And um, yeah, there is like a scratched out, uh, these scratched out lines in the middle of that chapter. Talix, do you have a pen? I need one. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> uh, so I, I was looking for flowers and food. Uh, you know, take was that a, would that be a survival check? Don't take this the wrong way, but uh, you yes. sufficiently hurt my feelings. How would a 19 be? Um, uh, <clears throat> a 19 is excellent. Is Brooke, um, um, did Brooke like, give you... Uh, an idea of what he wants uh, in terms of flowers, or are you just picking no. something that's... Yeah, I, okay. I... So I guess I'm just... And it wasn't a very long time either. I sort of was just getting a look around the area and seeing if I saw anything obvious. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so in terms of, uh, of food, uh, um... It is open plains. Um... Okay. There isn't that much to be scavenged unless you're, you're looking for, for like, meat. Um, but you found some, some bushes, some berries that are edible. Uh, flowers, though, you have plenty of uh, uh, 
of choice and the most popular uh, the most populous around the, uh, in on these hills are these tall flowers uh, with um, uh, the, with the petals growing in sort of like a spiral pattern, um, mm. like upward. They're like it's a it's a very long uh, flower bud thingy, uh, and the petals are yellow. This is called an an azere. Okay. And did so. So Talix already knows about these flowers. Yep, they they are native to Ladar, but um, like you you've seen them plenty of times. So they're pretty. Okay. Um, I wouldn't call them common. It's more like common in this area. All right. Yeah, tell us to bring some of those back and show them. Uh, up Your here. hands are full. Pontifex, if you have one, I will take it. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, why do you need a pen? To right wrong. Sure. Okay, uh, no, we, we're not going to write in that book. Why not? That's not yours to write over. That's Jamiel. Jamiel, let me write. If it qualms your uh, unease, Telex, anything that is written with uh, with mine is very easily removed uh, with magic, with itself. Do not remove it. No, it is. Uh, if you were to use the user of the pen, would be able to remove it in the event of a mistake. Uh, whatever you can figure it out and. Pontifex is gonna like press his finger into the side of his little golden orb thing and like pull out that uh, that like inkwell pen uh thing that I don't think inkwell pens exist. Uh but he has this um, this th No, I think I think they do. They're popular among the scribes. Well he pulls out an inkwell pen that is very uh, not normal. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if you would know this is a pen if he didn't tell you it was. Uh, and hands it over to you. Kind of looks more like a wand, if anything. Right. It's like With very a bit of metal. Uh, uh, like runic and like brass colored, and like there's like ridges and bumps all over the thing, but one end is pointy, and you would assume that's the writing end. Yeah. Like Tekka would kind of look it over first and then point one end towards the paper and like look to Pontifex for confirmation. Yeah. Go on. Good. Uh, and Tekel write below the last crossed out message. And it also writes in any color of your choice, apparently. Mm. You can oh. match the the ink uh, of this page to, to perfection, if you'd like. Yep. I don't think Tech cares too much of that. So you, you can tell. Okay. It's a slightly it's... different shade of black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So below he'll write... Tieflings will be born for forever more ever again. There is no curse. There. Have it back. It's visibly in a different thing and in a different handwriting too. Um but it's there. You have made an addition to the Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. You can read it over again, if you wish. What, what exactly was it? Tieflings will be born forevermore. There is no court curse. Basically, yeah. I feel like I'm missing something. But whatever. I'll just, I want to be able to refer to that. Thank you, Jason. Um, Brook, uh, what do you think of these? <clears throat> I'm assuming you mean the flowers, right? Yeah. They look good. Fitting. Thank you. Do you think, uh, I mean... Well, they're not exactly special, though. That's fine. But 
Hmm. I'll keep I looking mean, anyways. Just have these for now. Uh, don't you think that they will be gone bad once we're back? Oh, uh... No, let, let me do something real quick. The flowers do not go bad with their legs around. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, so for one thing, he does have uh, an empty jar that he can use. And uh, he'll just pour in a little bit of water from his water skin and put them in that. And also, he will take out his uh, his piece of amber and just wave it over them for a bit. And you'll just see, like, if there was any sort of wilt on the edges of the leaves or anything, they'll just prick up a little bit. Interesting. That's some nice magic you have there. All right. And I'm now carrying <laughs> the flowers. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. I can uh, probably find a good place for him. Let's stay up. Uh, Talix's bottomless backpack should be able. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, you put them uh, at the top, uh, uh, make sure that there would be like no weight on them that would squish them. They like the, the the flower part with the petals, so it's, it's most fragile and that's actually poking out of your backpack. Or I could tie them around my bill, either way. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Cool. Uh, Talix is going to read over the, the book too real quick. We should probably try to figure out exactly what he's talking about here. Regardless of whether a curse is real or not, Tekla, uh, he must have done something, and I think it's of interest of all of us to figure out what happened. Well, I'm wondering if, uh, if that entity that we had the encounter with uh, back in uh, Jamuel's cave has anything to do with it. I have, after meeting Taka, wondered if he might be the same sort of, well, if he was a tiefling. Do we not? Do we not know he's a tiefling? We're not sure, I don't think. Or do we? He has some traits in common with tieflings. Uh, um, the fact that tieflings are so vastly different from one another, because they they inherit, obviously, the characteristics of their parents, plus mm -hmm. having uh, the, the, the tail and fangs. Um, horns and it's, fangs and tail. It's, um, it's possible. He looked very different, but he had some tiefling like traits. DM, uh, how long ago was the incident with the uh, with Raquela and her child? Um, in game days, it has been. Oh wait! No, 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 no. When how she, long... uh, yeah, since she had the child. Yeah. Um, Pontifex has seen in yeah. her mind. Maybe um, I've, maybe it I've has been uh, perhaps about uh, a year. Roughly. Less I than a year. tell you that. Yeah. Hmm. It's possible that this is something that he left unfinished, or maybe this has something to do with why he was in that cave in the first place. Right. I had the same thoughts about the woman and the child, but... Uh... Perhaps that was before he did whatever he did. Tekka, would you... How would you feel 
if we tried to look into what he might have done and maybe try to find more more people of your kind specifically those in the past any who might have been born in the past few months since Jamil's death you can look for your answers but listen to me well there is no curse so don't seek one I understand can we keep moving Alex will spend five minutes reloading his backpack. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Tekka holding on to the book? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because uh, mm. I think Tekka just kind of like left it with the others for them to read and mm -hmm. kind of just turned his back um, on Jamil for a little while. Hand it over. Who will be picking it up? I mean, sounds like Talix was going to read it again, so... Oh, well, okay. Okay. Talix yeah, wants anyone else wants to have fun effects on it? <laughs> Do you want me to have it? If Talix bears both the seed and the book, he becomes unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a okay, force squeak. it in his hands. <laughs> okay, sure. I will put it right next to my steaming poo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just thought you might want to read it over more later. We can talk about it maybe tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Are we following um, a path? Is there like a beaten path that we're no. following right now? No, there isn't. No. Um, go due west. Yeah, it, you are pretty aimless uh, uh, in that regard. You all you know is west for a day or maybe two. Okay. Um, so you're you're paying attention to your surroundings, uh, just. Uh, from one moment to the next, this tree you're looking for uh, could be, it could show up anywhere. Um, but uh, all you see in every direction is just uh, uh, hills, uh, grassy, covered in flowers. It's beautiful, but it's also very, uh, there's this empty emptiness uh, um, that you're feeling. And it's, uh, how long has it been since your last rest? You're not really sure. You stop sometimes when you begin to feel tired, but uh, time feels a little strange right now when the scenery isn't changing too much. Um, you're tired and taking a break doesn't really help, but uh, all you know to do is to continue and to just look for this tree. It almost feels like you've been walking for days, or perhaps you only abandoned Simulielon an hour or two ago. The, uh, the tiredness is just taking over, turning into exhaustion. Your eyes close at some point. Are you still walking? Are you sleeping? By the time you open them, it appears as if uh, you zoned off for a really long time. The sun is now low on the horizon, and the sky is painted in shades of red and purple. But that's not the only difference. Soon you realize that much more has changed around you. There is a river to your left that should not be there, according to Pontifex's map. As you look at it, you realize that the entirety of the riverbed is slowly shifting to the right, making it look like an enormous snake slithering across the grassy field. Then you spot trees, to the south, that you don't remember being there before. And they too are moving, dragging themselves on their large roots to some unknown destination. Scattered oh. puddles of water boil and steam away. One of them seems to be emptying upward into the sky, 
like a small fizzling waterfall that's disobeying gravity. Dozens of colorful fireflies dance around every flower, buzzing in harmony. Far in the distance, the grass is covered in a light layer of snow. Falling onto you are pale pink leaves. Oh. 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 Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh. Animated. The leaves are wiggling. I have. Even the grass is wiggling. Wind. Oh, for <laughs> <laughs> uh, place your minis beneath the tree. Do we still <clears throat> see each other? Um. Yes. In fact. Um. Okay. Let me. Uh, let me tell you what you see. Um. Pip. Let's start from you. You notice that there is something in your arms. Something that feels like a large, warm doll. The creature turns its head to look at you and lifts one of its four hands to touch your nose. You're holding uh, a small Ugrin. One who uh, looks curious but not scared of you, despite their shy nature. Hi. Where, where did you come from? Wait, where, where are we? <laughs> Pontifex, you feel a weight on your head. You reach up to touch something soft that, after a moment, uh, meows annoyedly at your hand. A white paw touches your fingers, claws playfully extended. Oh. Oh, he he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, I think he's gonna, like, lay his staff, or even just drop his staff in his little orb on the ground and try to reach up and, like, grab it with both hands. Um... The cat is slightly annoyed at this, but uh, you end up grabbing it. It's <laughs> perfectly white and it's now on your lap, just like the little Ugrin uh, is uh, uh, making little, almost like squeaky like noises at uh, at Pip, but that uh, Pip interprets uh, to mean, I've always been here. <laughs> Talix, to your dismay, something huge is standing right next to you. And your first instinct is to leap to your feet and wait from it. Then you look. A chestnut horse watches your reaction in silence, and then pushes its face into your chest. Oh. Tekka. Is it? Oh, yeah. It, well, okay. Talix will eagerly ruffle her mane. Uh, Tekka, Oli enters your field of vision from above. The pangolin floats before your face, held in the air by two pairs of translucent wings, like those of a dragonfly. Based on the way he begins to circle your head, he seems to be having fun. Tekka drops his core staff. Careful. Um, he slows down a little bit uh, and lands in your arms. Brooke, you're sleeping so comfortably that you're the last person in the group to open your eyes. Your pillow is unusually soft and warm, and it rises and falls, rises and falls. You sit up, and you realize that it is a snow pillow, but rather a large black panther, who opens one eye, looks at you, and leaps back, visibly startled. <clears throat> I will reach out my hand with the palm forward so he can sniff, or she. Well, all of the other animals in the company of your uh, companions um, seem quite uh, um, uh, friendly, um, glad to, to be touched and talked to. Um, this panther seems more um, uh, s just startled. It looks around, um, backs away from your hand at first, but then eventually you just, you give it a few seconds, it begins to cautiously move towards you, sniffs your fingers, makes eye contact, and then pushes its head into your hand. Alright, I'll scratch his head. 
This moment of connection is interrupted by the familiar voice of Squeak, who groans annoyedly. Uh, Pip, you look down to see the imp in its uh, uh, true form, locked up in a small cage with metal bars, his arms crossed in resignation. Oh, come on. <laughs> what would um, you like to do? I don't know why. I, for some reason... <laughs> At first sight, I thought you might have been Moonbeam, but you couldn't be. <laughs> but you are beautiful. Alex will just stand up and kind of hug the horse and just kind of look her over and stroke her fur. The markings match those of Moonbeam, but uh, you know it is impossible. Um, animals, especially large ones, uh, it's it's really difficult to bring them from Plurna to Lidaria, and uh, if they were if brought over, it would be for a purpose. Uh, Burumia brings wyverns occasionally, and it helps. Uh, uh, their presence helps to defend their colonies. Uh, horses are rarer, but if they're brought over, they're, it is for work, and certainly this one would not find its way to you, would it? Uh, Pontifex, there is uh, something wrong, just this weird sensation, and you feel slightly lighter. There is a weight missing from your belt. Jamuel is not with you. Uh, everyone has a problem, and he's like fr uh, frantically like patting over his body and like inverting his pack and dumping it on the floor. Uh, has anyone seen Jane Mule? Uh, as you as you empty your backpack, um, everything else is there. The only thing that's missing is uh, the Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Oh, I see mm -hmm. you are pranking me. You offload him onto me just so that he will be uh, absconded with by one of a very silly prank, but this is not oh. funny. Where is he? Professor, I, I... I don't know. I gave him to you. I... In 300 some odd years of life, I have never once misplaced <laughs> a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's always a first for everything, right? Uh, no. That would be magic we, in play. Do the rest of us see what happened to Squeak as well? Uh, yeah. Uh, He's in a in a small uh, cage. It's small enough and um, that it feels like you could easily lift it and carry it around. But uh, uh, there is no door on that cage. No obvious uh, lock. Uh, no clear way how Squeak could have gotten in. This horse looks exactly like Moonbeam, but that's been at least 20 years ago. Well, a little less. <laughs> it's been at least 15 years ago. <laughs> uh, wait, something's, something's not right. Can Pip still talk through Squeak if yeah. he tries? Uh, so <laughs> Pip just holds up the cage with Squeak in it, and uh, the Ugring climbs comes. onto the cage. Oh, uh, and then Pip's arm just sort of falters down in the from the weight a little bit before he brings it back up. Um, yeah, and Ugring are are my favorite animal. Hey, little guy. What is this? Uh, you've seen these before, these little primates with the four arms. Uh, you met them on your way to between Cleon and Vera. Yeah. They were the ones who guided you to, to the fruits. Mm -hmm. um, they, are, they have gray fur and the pale blue bellies. 
and four arms, apparently. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember that detail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somehow. Uh, Pip just reaches for it and tickles its little blue belly. Um, all four hands are just uh, reach for your wrist, and they're uh, they're trying to just uh, pull you off. Rips my Whatever head. this place is, it seems to attract a great number of animals. <laughs> uh, good ones are too. They... I mean, I'm honest. The panther looked as surprised as I am. Oh my god, a panther! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi! All the Wait, horses in running, so I assume it is friendly. A uh, panther, a wow. uh, panther backs away, um, st startled by by the commotion. None of the other animals. Everyone else is calm. Uh, the horse is. Uh, um, very close to this panther, but doesn't seem... Uh, uh, in fact, the panther seems more scared of what's going on than the horse uh, is. Uh, um, and uh, Pip, you, you, <laughs> you meow at it, uh, and it tilts its head. Um, there is uh, no reply. Meow? Meow? It backs huh. away a little bit more. All right. Talix is going to reach for... Zamber. It is there, right? Yes. Okay. Is the seed there? Uh, oh, uh, you're opening it up? No, 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 the seed. No. He's just oh, uh, yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, like, are, you're sure checking the, 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 the container the of the seed. Autumn. Yes. Okay. All right, but also he's going to reach for Zamber and pull it out. Okay. Yes. And he's going to uh, quick cast Speak with Animals. And also try to communicate with the horse, and then the panther, and then everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what do you say to the horse? And he does. Hello, do you know, do you know me? Um, to everyone else, uh, uh the, the horse just, wait, how do you say the word? Nay? Yeah. Uh, the horse nays, uh, and to Pip and, uh, Talix. Um, this, uh, the sound of the horse makes has meaning, uh, but translating to... Hello, Talix! This is impossible. Are you saying that a loud with this is impossible, or still There's, in horse talk? I see us here. Are you with Theris? Hmm, no. I haven't seen him in a long time. But I haven't seen it, seen you in a longer time. How, why are you all, why are you here? How are you here? I'm visiting. Are we dead? <laughs> um, there is a chuckle that comes not from the horse, but from above you. Um, a young voice that uh, you don't recognize. But one of these, uh, um, a humanoid voice that speaks in a language all of you can understand this does not come from an animal uh, who, after laughing for a bit, says, No, you are not dead. Um, you look up to see dangling. Upside down from one of the tree's branches, uh, a young, shirtless kid. You recognize the vox and the feathers, typical of an Atarava, together with the uh, very long, pointy ears and soft facial features of an elf. His skin color is a curious and unnatural pastel pink, which matches the leaves of the tree. He has small, branched horns, like those of a pronghorn, and he is dangling from the branch with his tail. Coiled placidly around his left wrist is a small green, green snake, while a black cat swings from his right arm. Well, hi there! There is... Wow, there's so many of you today! Good day. Wait, uh, before we get distracted, uh, you little one, have you seen a book? 
A book? What's a uh, book? It's about a yay big. Oh, uh, I don't think so. Are there others with you? Are you here alone? Mm hmm. Talix is just like hugging Moonbeam. Well, while he's talking now. I'm not alone. There's all of you here. Uh, Do you live here? Um, well, uh, yeah. I think so. Live? Sure. I live here. We are alive. <laughs> well, yeah. That people don't come in d into dreams. I uh, usually. Hmm, as far as I know. Are... Are you a Rayra? <laughs> uh, what's that? A, a Rayra. Ray... Uh, uh, if you that's, have wings? If that's what you want to call me, sure, I'm a Rayra. No, I don't have wings. Oh, but I could have wings. You know, I never thought about having wings. That's a great idea. I'll work on it. He climbs down from the tree, um, landing somewhere between uh, uh, Pip and Talix. He's far uh, younger than even Pip. Could not possibly be older than, than 10. He looks up at the rest of you. Um, caresses the horse. And says, so, are you ready to, um, to see your dreams? Is this how dreams work? I've, I don't think I've had a proper one yet. Not usually. I mean, sure, this is how dreams work. That's, that's how I, I make them work. Well, are you unsatisfied? Do you not like your Thomas. horse? I can give you a different one. Do you want it to be bigger? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, she's... This is the dream. Well, it's... Thomas is going to... A dream? To look to Moonbeam. Uh, um, uh, hey, uh, dream, dream kid. Uh... Oh, it's me. I'm Viz. Viz? Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, Viz. Why, why am I in a cage? <laughs> oh, look at you. You're so cute. You do. You have wings. I should have wings like that. Would be nice to have wings like that. Yeah, it would be nice to use these wings. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't put you in the cage. So, like, don't be mad at me. Who did? Well, it's... I don't know, it's just the rules. You know, your kind can't be in dreams. That is racist. Well, I didn't make oh. the rules. That's just how it works. Normally... Talos is about to say something and then doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> did... did you get these animals for us? <laughs> yeah. I took a look at you, and I was like, mm, yeah, you like these. And I went and got you one. What are they called? I don't know what they're called. Oh, the, and you'll these are start scratching the Ugrin <laughs> over the head. Oh, it's cute! Wait, did I give it an extra pair of arms? Whoops, no, that's I can normal. take them off. Oh, that's... No! <laughs> no more arms. <laughs> <laughs> I... I can give it an extra pair if you'd like. Are are those real? Pip looks down at the the animals that are on uh, Viz's arms. Oh yeah. Well, all of them are. I think. Why is the panther the only one not happy to be here? <laughs> you tell me. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> anyway, is sad. everyone ready? Um, I can show you very good dreams. That means my dreams are always good. It doesn't mean that they're happy though. Most of the time, they actually kind of aren't. But 
it is still good that people have those dreams. You know what I'm talking about? Will be remembered. Well, yeah. Except that one. And he'll point at Alex. So uh, maybe you guys do all the remembering for him, okay? Uh, how, how do you know that? I looked in your head. I didn't even notice. Wait, it's just, will you know, we it's... see each other's dreams? It's just your, your and, and like he'll he'll climb onto the tree and dangle from one of the lower branches, and from from that position upside down, he'll start pulling um, at Talix's one of his ears, and he'll say, "It's this thing. It's always it's always people with these." But you 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 though. <laughs> Point to his ears. <laughs> <laughs> what? And he like bring a hand to his ears. Huh? Oh, yeah. You're you're an elf, Tiefling. Um, no, you. Almost. <laughs> he got you there. <laughs> <laughs> got him. <laughs> okay, Saka, I'm a bit out of my league here. Is this okay? Is this what you expected? We should follow instructions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in fact um oh. it's your animals uh they'll they'll show you where you need to go wow that's why they're here they're your guides because like i, I don't totally... always know the way but but they do i don't know if i remember how to ride but uh i'll happily try you're okay with it Moonbeam? she prepositions herself just a little bit so she's uh, um you know, you're right next to her. Tell us if you just kind of look to the others. Ooh, do you want to start? We can start with you. We can start with someone else. We'll we'll have to take turns though, because I can't I can't multitask. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a word. Okay, little impersonation, uh, personification of the DM. <laughs> so uh, wait, Talos doesn't actually want to go first, though. <laughs> can we can we roll for it, maybe? If, or if someone else wants to go? You can pick, uh, you can roll, whatever you prefer. Tekka will raise his hand. Okay. I will go. Ooh, okay, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, we can do that. He'll, uh, the, the little kid just rubs his hands, uh, and then he'll climb back down from the tree. Um, he will hop around you a few times, like, looking at you from all directions. Um, he'll poke the belly of Oli, who, uh, curls up, still, um, flying in the air, just now a little ball. Um, and, uh, this nods and says, okay, so, uh, just keep in mind, you might see something that you need to know, or something that you already knew, but need to remember, or, um, mm, you might even meet someone who is dream walking right now. Oh, that could be exciting. We'll wait for them to show up. So, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, well, um, ooh, what's your name, little buddy? Oli! All right, Oli, lead the way. Oh, and everyone else, uh, we're going with. You don't want to get lost, so I never get separated, okay? It will be very it bad. It's like halfway up climbing the tree, and then climbs back down. <laughs> <laughs> Is someone supposed to take Squeak, or are we leaving him here? Never get separated. Why is he in a cage? Because well, he's yeah, not allowed to like be to here. Know. You know, he shouldn't be here at all. What? Because I am a devil? Yeah, you know how things work here. Everyone has no, their own place. I don't. <laughs> Everyone has their own place. Human people stay on the land. And then and stay your the people beach, stay in the sea. Yeah, you know it. 
Wait. What? I feel like we're just glossed over something very important. <laughs> nah, you can talk about that later. <laughs> oh, Ollie's sleeping. Come on, let's follow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can oh. I just say that I really didn't have luck with changing um, summaries? I feel like the one, the one for the next session is going to be a lot of You, work. this will be a rough <laughs> one. Madam, <laughs> no, can we switch again? I'll be waiting for your apology during the stream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh Tekka, um... You begin to walk, followed closely uh, by your companions and uh, um, the strange little tiefling. Hmm? Uh, there we go. Oli flutters ahead of you, leading the way. Mountains and seasons pass you by until your feet sink slightly in an endless sea of sand. Between the dunes, you spot a bustling city, inhabited by somewhat short people with skin and vox ranging from red to blue. The rest of the party has never seen Ledarians like these, but to Tekka, it looks like his mother, his mother would fit right in. You take in the sight, the elevated buildings balancing on sturdy wooden legs, the shimmering hoods that everyone wears, the strange animals floating a couple of feet off the ground. Then a shadow is suddenly cast over all of you. You turn around to check what has covered the sun. Standing, standing directly behind the party is a humanoid creature about 20 feet tall. Their skin is a thin, translucent, almost non-existent veil stretched across their body, leaving flesh, veins, and bones all visible and glistening in the sunlight. Their eye sockets are empty, empty, but you can still feel their intense stare upon you. They wear no clothes whatsoever, and they don't seem to have legs. Uh, rather, their form simply fades into nothingness near the ground, hovering weightlessly in front of you. Most eerie of all is their stillness. No breathing seems to be taking place. The wind doesn't sway them. And they made no sound when they showed up. A voice touches your minds. Unspoken, free of words or the constraints of languages. Just pure, simple meaning. We have been we have waiting been for, you, for you, lost ones. Let me Let show you the path you that has been hidden, hidden from you. you. Return, Return home. home. The being exen extends an arm. Tekka, do you let them touch your head? Tekka steps forward, accepting the hand. Despite the heat that you're feeling, um, what, what touches your forehead is cold, almost like ice. Tekka, there is new knowledge blooming in your mind. You now know how to get to your mother's homeland. With it comes the realization that this place couldn't be further from your own hometown. It appears that your mother traveled the farthest from home as possible until she simply ran out of land. Had the roles in history been reversed, perhaps she would have been the one to discover Polerna, if only through the sheer desire to continue moving forward, even through and beyond the Sea of Chaos. The being retracts their hand. They watch you in silence. Tekka stands weakly, sort of stumbling, looking into the, the empty eye socket. Can I 
go. We have waited long enough. But we will still give you some more time. Go. Come. Tekka reaches out for being's hand. The tall creature, somewhat humanoid, but it's it's hard to call them that. Extends their hand again, touches yours. It still feels so so cold. All it almost burns you, and uh, your mind is filled with thoughts, uh, images, sounds, um, such a flood of information that it, uh, uh, you, it al you almost fall over from the sheer uh, strength and amount of it. The desert all around you shakes, the dunes flattening, everything feels blurry and unstable until it's gone. There is grass beneath your feet again. The tree above you. You're back where you were before. Home. I need to go home. Oli lands on Tekka's head, um, a small noise escaping its mouth. It seems concerned. It seems concerned for you. Uh, Pip uh, and uh, Talix still. Um, you do interpret that, uh, that little noise as him asking Tekka if he's okay. <laughs> I'll be... And... Tekka takes Ollie on his shoulder and embraces him. It will be fine. Have a place for us both. Ollie stays in your arms for as long as you want to hold him. Eventually, the silence is uh, broken by Viz, who uh, claps his hands excitedly and says, oh, I have never seen something like that before. What, what was it? Home, oh, where I need to be. <laughs> okay, cool, I guess. It looked really hot. Perhaps so. You know, that doesn't happen very often. That like, um... That you have a dream, and someone else is dreaming, and you meet. Th they were dreaming? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's... that. that, that, that I, I, I think so, that's how it works. If, 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 it's a, if it is a dream... And, um, but you can interact with it, and it interacts with you, um, then someone else is probably dreaming. Maybe. Their touch, connection, taught me so much. Oh, well, good. I mean, that's why I make people dream. Um... They need... Uh, people need to know things sometimes. And... Uh, um, when things are really confusing and complicated, people can make very bad decisions. And uh, I'd like to stop that from happening. Did 
there is nothing wrong in my goal. It will not harm anyone. <laughs> well, if you say so. Hmm. Well, before is we it... um before we we see the next dream, um I think we should take a break. And just uh, so you can think about it. And he'll just sit with his back against the tree. One question. For me? Yes. Okay. When you looked into Ollie, did he want wings? Hmm. Uh, Tega, you can roll an insight check. Okay. I could ask him. When we're not dreaming, maybe it would be better. The tiefling's face is crunched up. Um, he's, um... It's like he's trying to put into words a concept that he is not old enough uh, to express. Um, it doesn't feel like he's um, avoiding the question. He's trying very hard to to um, to put this answer together. Uh, but all all he ends up saying is. Well, it's not really about Oli. But me. Mm hmm. Maybe it might be about him. He points at Pontifex. Hmm. Pontifex. Did you dream about Ali flying? Did we all see that? Everyone saw, everyone was there with Tekka. You all saw the being, you all saw the exchange that took place between them. You all followed him and Oli and were there for it. It's, I believe we all saw. Uh, Talix gets kind of struck with something, and he's going to... Is he wearing his backpack? Mm-hmm. He's going to throw it down and frantically go for his journal and pen. Okay. You open uh, the journal, uh, flipping past the pages so you can't get one that's blank, but then you, you pause and you go back. You cannot read any of the things that are written in your journal. All the drawings are smudged and the words... Uh, uh, you know when, you, when, you, when you're reading a book but your mind is kind of elsewhere and you get to the bottom of a page and realize you didn't uh, get any of that information? It feels like that. The harder you look at a page, the more whatever's written on it is just not entering your mind. Confused. You all should dream. If you saw what I saw, then your dream will help. <laughs> Does it always show you home? Mm, for most people, not always. Why? You want to see your home? I don't know what it would show me exactly. Do you want to be next? I'm done uh, being here. I'm bored. Let's go with your dream. Um, okay. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. And he like leaps to his feet. The rest of you are ready? Yes? <clears throat> Come on, get up. <laughs> 
Get up! Okay. As ready as it gets. Um, and, uh, Brooke, as for you, um, you're in the walk to the desert area, and uh, while the others were discussing uh, uh, Tekka's dream, the panther has started to be a bit more friendly, and by the time uh, um, Pip starts chasing after the Ugrin as it leaps from, uh, from uh, the cage and starts running, uh, the panther is sticking by your side, uh, close enough that most of the time you're you're in uh, you're in contact, you're in touch. I'm pretty sure Brooke would uh, be scratching his head or his back the entire time. It seems to be a lot more um, acceptable of this now, and occasionally even leans a little bit further into the creatures when you like find just the right spot. Um, Bip, the the Ugris, uh, the Ugrin is uh, uh, leaning forward and uh, moving across the grassland with uh, the help of its arms. The landscape uh, rushes past you and the others as uh, they're after you, until you're running through a thick forest. The little animal now swings from tree to tree with such ease that you struggle to keep up, especially while holding Squeak's cage. Mm. Soon, you begin to recognize your surroundings, as you've spent many hours of your childhood in this wilderness. Then the trees part, and the sun has set. Further ahead, bathed in the light of the moons, there's Lita. You and the animal rush within the colony, and you lose sight of the Ugrin and turn around a corner, only to spot, only to spot your own parents, sprinting through the alleyways. Your father is holding a younger version of yourself, small, asleep. As the rest of you catch up to Pip, you see a human Borovian couple, each wearing dark cloaks and hoods rushing towards uh, the colony's port. The moons are so bright that you can easily see colors, but it is very cold. As they reach the water's edge, Pip's mother holds up a pebble in her hands, and you notice that most of the concentric circles painted on the rock are currently blue. Quickly, Pip's father says, before the tide falls. As the two of them rush past the port following the shoreline, the older Pip and the rest of the party follow. Whenever the woman stops and holds up the rock in the moonlight, the painted circles have changed a little. Every time she shakes her head and con continues running, until finally every circle on the pebble has turned blue. That's when Pip's parents, still holding their child, turn toward the sea and walk into the water. They drag themselves forward until they are submerged roughly to their hips. Pip's, Pip's back is just barely touching the water at this point, and the child does not wake up. His father looks out towards the north, to the horizon, and shouts, We're here! We did everything you asked! You listen to the gentle rolling of the, of the waves until... A mighty roar of the sea startles you. An enormous, enormous tendril covered in dark blue scales emerges from the water and crashes down onto the humans. With a startled scream, the woman is dragged beneath the surface, followed seconds later by the man who loses his grip on Pip. Mom! Dad! As the waves settle, the young boy is left floating face down in the sea, until... Something breaks the surface of the water once more. A humanoid reaches for Pip's unconscious body and lifts him in his arms. He has horns that spread from the sides of his forehead and curve down, large and smooth, long enough to nearly reach his shoulders. His skin is a pale, grayish color, his teeth sharp, and only one vertical eye glistens on his face. As he swims out of the sea, you see that where his human torso ends, it is connected to a snake-like body that splits into two. 
while there is grey metal glistening on his body, he doesn't seem to be wearing armor. Rather, it's as if the metal that uh, is part uh, of his body, growing directly out of his skin like a series of vines wrapped around him in a thin spiral. The creature slithers past all of you, not seeing you. It moves through the colony until he reaches Pip's old house. He needs to lean forward to fit in a doorway. You all follow in. And uh, then the creature places the child in his bed. And with a simple flick of his wrist, Pip's clothes and mattress are now dry. He tucks the child in and chuckles to himself, his voice sounding surprisingly human. As he turns and leaves the house, still seemingly unaware of your presence, he holds up an object in one hand. The pebble with the painted circles. He throws it aside before he returns to the sea. Everyone's attention remains focused on the rock as it rolls down an alleyway for a short while, then settles, paint side up, and you watch as a wrinkled, shaking hand reaches for it. A kind, familiar pair of clouded eyes looks straight at you, Pip. It no longer feels like it's nighttime. You feel the warmth of the sun and the grass is back beneath your feet. The tree is here, the colony is gone. But Pip, your granny is still there. Arms open wide like she's waiting for a hug. She isn't part of the vision of the past. She is here. Granny? She waits, arms still open wide. Who, who was that? Who, who was that? She slowly lowers her arms and begins to approach you. M Mom and Dad, are they in the ocean? Where are they? Who was that? Granny. <coughs> Granny. And as she comes all the way towards you, she takes you in her arms. It's a very, her. it's a very weak embrace from her. Ah, you can feel her bones just creaking slightly as you hold her. She caresses your hair. And gives you time. I missed you, I'm sorry. Oh, Pip. Pip, my sweet child. And she'll give you all the time that you need to, uh, to let it all out. <clears throat> to the rest of you, this woman is, uh, her back is so bent over that uh, uh, she's... Pretty much Pip's height. Uh, her hair is white and there is a uh, little of it left. The... She... She looks like she has lived more uh, than most people ever managed to. Her, um, her expression is soft, gentle... Motherly. Her eyes are closed. And once Pip's breathing has steadied, um, she, she doesn't break the hug, she just pulls away just enough to be able to look at him. And says, uh, as she dries the tears away from his cheeks, Pip, my sweet child, how lovely it is to see that face. How have you been? Eating well? Since I saw you last, it seems you've grown. How long it's been? I came just to visit you. Since your granny was left alone. Her expression hardens a little at this. She doesn't provide an answer to your question and instead um, 
she glances down where you've uh, dropped the cage with Squeak inside, and then back up at you and says, My dear, your granny's recipe. There isn't time to waste. Show me now what you've gathered, dear, and the knot may be undone. Pip um, picks up the cage and and then reaches down into his pouch and and grabs out the few seeds that he's collected and says, I, it's not much, but I've gotten this so far. She looks down at the seeds and remains motionless. But you, you've seen this before. You can recognize the calm before the storm. You should know this will not do, my child. It must be all or none. I Clouds know. darken the sky. A lightning strikes in the distance and the earth shakes. Pip, you look down and a sense of intense vertigo takes over you. The ground has risen hundreds of feet in the air, separating you, Squeak, and Granny from the rest of the party. Placing you at the top of a rocky spire you cannot escape. Down with the others, Viz um, shouts and uh, um, steps away from this, seemingly uh, just completely taken by surprise by this development. And Pip, Granny's voice is now like thunder. You've traveled far, made new friends, but all good children know their chores come before fun, and yours have just begun. And however far you go, you will be bound till you make amends. Pip. I know. Your scarf slithers away from your neck, crawling down your torso, down one of your legs, and disappearing down the mountainside. Brooke, you catch Pip's scarf. Mm -hmm. Pip, the end of your news is now in Granny's spindly fingers. She looks at you straight in your eyes. Lest you forget your promise, a derelict child must be punished, dear. Thus, to keep you honest, you shall lose something you hold near. With your attention focused entirely on the news, it takes you a few seconds to notice the painted rock still firmly in Granny's other hand. You glance at it for just a moment and then it's gone. Her eyes are wet, her expression pained. And you feel like you force her to do something she didn't really want to do to you. <laughs> now that you can appreciate the sense of urgency, may you begin to move more purposefully. Pip, <laughs> you needn't struggle so with this burden. To make an enemy bleed, to take from one in need, these things can be done, even by an urchin. Granny reaches for your hair, caressing the top of your head with her long fingers. Pip not. That which cannot be found must be made. That's the first trick you learn in this trade. Now go forth, my dear, and complete the task. Until next I visit, that is all I ask. You shall know the time is nigh when the sea falls from the sky. When next you blink, everything is back the way it was before. You stand beneath the tree, the sky is clear, your new friends surround you. But the pouch where you keep your pebbles is slightly lighter. Did we hear all of that? Uh, yeah, a quick rewind to <laughs> whenever <laughs> Pip was rocketed into the sky, Talix mm -hmm. would have started freaking out. Oh, that's uh, fair. He would have looked to Fizz. What? What is this? What's going on? Um, uh, well, that is a very powerful dream, Walker, and I have no control over this. <laughs> okay. Um, and we all saw all of that, yeah? You saw the... Um, you didn't hear the final part of the conversation when Pip and the, uh, his grandmother were uh, atop this thin mountain that had just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, but the, so we didn't the see... bit about the painted stone, we all got that, yeah. 
we saw that his mother had it. We didn't see him lose it just now. Well, you saw like at the end of the dream that she picked it up. Uh, this might be like a, a, a complication or maybe not. Uh, Pontifex is the one who currently has the painted rock. <gasps> That's fine. Pip, Pip got super frustrated with it before and get called it a stupid not rock and then mm -hmm. gave it to the professor. That's okay. Oh, if uh, he has it, then it's... Uh, <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, if so you have it, then you feel that, that uh, something has changed. Mm. Mm. So does <clears throat> do I still have the stone? No. Um. Oh, I had it first. No, that's up. All right. Um. Since Brooke has heard of the nod or ties or rope around his neck before, I think as soon as he realizes that that is his grandma or granny, um, he would pay very close attention to just like facial expressions of the granny just to get some insight on whether she is a good person or completely evil <laughs> you can roll an insight check cool hmm. so pip is now back on the the ground and he's he's facing away from the rest of the group and his his head is down and instead of a scarf around his neck uh, now everyone would see uh, this rope coiled around his neck and uh, this noose and the long end of the noose the rope that's still dangling down uh, along Pip's back has five knots in it I think as soon as he would come down Brooke would go up to him and Ties a shawl that back around his neck. Scarf. Mm -hmm. I think. Scarf. <laughs> and then say, hey, we, we need to talk about this once we're out of here. Are you okay? Are Ooh, you... Or we could talk about this now. You know, you have all the time you need here, right? Did I mention that? You have time. I mean, we have time, yeah, but he just went through it. Oh, Give oh. him some time. Well, he has time. I've given him all the time. Nobody is ever satisfied with what I do. <laughs> Perhaps now is not the time. Pep, are you okay? The Ugrin still around? Is what? Is the Ugrin still around? Um, you don't see him at first, but uh, eventually you notice movement above you. Um, he's swinging from one of the branches, watching this. Uh, Brooke, that's your inside check, yeah, the 14? Mm hmm. Everything about this woman felt kind, warm, genuine, all the way up until when Pip showed her some seeds, something in his hand, it looked like seeds, and then he just saw this moment of anger, and the entire world around you, around you was undone. It's hard to tell, um... It felt, her kindness felt real, but you struggle to understand whether it was real and then it was undone by anger, or if perhaps it was never there to begin with. Okay. Do I still have Moonbeam? Yeah. Just, like, bring her around to the front of Pip. Here. This is a very nice horse. Do you want to talk to her? Pip shakes his head no. And just walks over to the tree, however close it may be, and uh, grabs the doll that he still has and just 
keeps it close to his chest as he sits down, uh, sort of curled up. Tell us to just stand back up. Pip, I guess when all is said and done, I might not remember everything that happened here, but I'm going to go ahead and promise you that whatever you need, I'll do whatever I can to help you with this, okay? Hold me to it. So sorry. You stay in silence for a while, giving Pip time to process this, and the rest of us are going to go on a break. <laughs> we oh, what a nice way to. <laughs> So, leave us <laughs> hanging. Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. wow, Jason! Actually, not intentional at all. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to think of a pun that involves the word linchpin, but I'm coming up a blank, so I'm just going to say the word. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think, I think Pip got the worst of the two dreams. That's my opinion. Beat that, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh... Hmm. Woo! Juicy. That's a hard bag to follow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oof. Thanks, Winter. Thank you. That was insightful. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that the rock is tied to his family. Or I learned at least a he lot. Imagines, imagines that it's tied to his family, and yeah, and we're no learning about the it. sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. learning something about what the point of the colors on the rock means. Yeah, right. Yeah. And metal water demon. Just uh, <laughs> if they turn blue, run. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's like Sting. Mm -hmm. yes. Have they ever turned blue while Pip was carrying it and uh, noticed? There have been circles that occasionally were blue. They've never been Just all, all blue. blue. In, in fact, okay. they've never been all of them a uniform color. It's always mm. been... Uh, uh, like Sometimes there will be a few repeats, maybe two reds uh, and then all the other colors. Maybe three blues and then all the other colors. But like... Uh, never more than half of the same color. Okay. How many rings were there? Um, you guys have counted them before. Yeah, for sure. Did, oh god, where is this information? <laughs> yeah. Did you get that while we're on break? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, how long of a break are we wanting? Uh, ten minutes. I'll see you in um at twelve minutes. Ten minutes past the three. Cool, 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 okay. cool, cool. Bye, everyone. I will see you guys then. <laughs> Bye. I guess there was the tiny bit of sweetness whenever his granny hugged him right before she... <laughs> Murdered a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Murdered a child's hopes and wishes. <laughs> now that you know that this uh, one is actually connected to your yes! family, let me take it from you. <laughs> that was so painful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I didn't... I didn't know what she was actually going to do. I just knew that <laughs> she was supposed to punish you somehow by taking something. I had a feeling it'd be the rock, but I didn't know... Like, uh, it would be an I didn't know it was actually rock. going to be revealed to be so much more important before she did it. it okay, so looking at the rock from the from the dream and this rock that Pip had, were they, were they like the same rock or were they a, a different rock but with similar? Right, like is this like uses? an object that there's more than one of, or was this the exact same stone that Pontifex happened to find in a flea market? 
I will give... <clears throat> we're officially back on stream. Uh, mm. I will give everyone one perception check. You, this is not All something right. you can apply guidance or anything else on. Um, it wasn't oh. something you were like prepared to do. Yeah. It's just what you happened to see. Just perception. Um, I don't actually know if everyone is back, but... <laughs> I think they are. Oop. Ooh. Ooh. Not bad. Not it bad. It makes sense if Bonifax is the one to notice. Is he any 14 oh. rollers? Pontifex, <laughs> 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 um, your, your eyesight uh, is, has begun to fail you a little bit. Um, that's to be expected of, after all these years, but Bye. when it really matters, um, you can still rely on your eyes. And you are certain that the, the pebble, the painted rock that you saw in the hands of Pip's, Pip's mother, and later in the hand of that uh, part snake creature, it's the exact same one as the one you were holding. Up until uh, just a little while ago. I think he's going to, if no one else realizes that, he's going to compartmentalize that. What does that mean? Compartmentalize. Uh, <laughs> he's going to keep that to himself and put that in its own little jar to be opened at a later date <laughs> when it is, when it, it is, is able to unpack this. Uh, I don't think he wants to bring up the fact that this stupid rock, quote unquote, <laughs> that Pip was mad at and then like subsequently got rid of and threw with the professor and said, fuck that, that it's he some never... critical piece of his history. <laughs> I, I will clarify something. He never like gave it to you. He threw it at you, but then he, he kept it. Like he still was looking at it every day throughout their boat journey. Yeah, I figured he would have taken it back. Oh, I thought you like to, no like, something along the lines of this stupid rock and like threw it at the professor and like was done with it. He, he did throw it at you at a moment of frustration, but he kept with it. <laughs> okay, I've had it in my inventory. Now no one has. There was a whole no one has. moment that happened off camera. Oh, where Pip had to request back the rock that he used. To <laughs> He probably tried to steal it. <laughs> Over my clammy amphibious hands. <laughs> you have to turn this frog on his back to get this stuff. And then, you know, you did. <laughs> yeah. <The> telekinesis. <clears throat> okay. So, um, Pip, eventually the Ugrin that led you to your vision very cautiously climbs down the tree and um, looks at you from above, begins to climb down your arm and settles in alongside it all. It's not your fault. Yugrin still apologizes. <clears throat> Viz speaks up. So, um, are you guys coming back another time? Or... Or are we doing this? Sure. What's up for Oh, hey, you I know what I just minutes. thought? Oh? Uh, you asked me earlier if, like, dead people can come here? Yeah. Right? Who asked me that? Was that you? And he's, like, pointing at Talix. He's a little unsure. Yeah, actually, there's, uh, there's a good reason why I'd like to know that. Okay, yeah, they can. They totally can. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes I forget that I'm dead. Oh. Huh? What? You're dead? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've been in the ground for a really long time. I'm pretty sure I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Oh, well, you know uh, what? That gets us over with. I'm okay to go <laughs> Oh. oh, we're just gonna gloss over that, okay. <laughs> I mean, if you... To be fair, a lot of things are dead. <laughs> um. This character is basically just Peter Pan. You know, big guy, that kind of sounded threatening. You're not going to hurt me, right? You're dead. Right, I don't know if I can be like any more dead in this. Maybe. I don't know. I've never really like, given it uh, much of a thought. But I'd rather not be. Like, this is actually fine. I'm, I'm not going to hurt you. Okay, cool. Um, Telix or Pontifex, if we go into my dream or something like that, can one of you stay close to Pip just in case something comes up that isn't really well made for kids uh yeah i suppose we wouldn't want them to see anything traumatizing <laughs> you know, well i appreciate your uh, parental instincts i think it's a, a little late for that <laughs> no, I mean, yeah i, but I fair don't enough. We, we don't want to make it any worse yeah all right Lead me, pa The panther looks at you quizzically. How does he look at me? Uh, like, perplexed? Confused? Like he's about to ask you a pop quiz! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um, then the, the panther shifts its attention to the tiefling, who just merely gestures forward. Um, so the panther begins to walk. And you with it, and the rest of the group behind you. Um, the two of you are moving in a direction that Viz pointed towards until the sun begins to set. The sea of chaos shines brightly above your heads, but the beauty of the elemental planes is not enough to distract you from the cold you feel. Not just cold but also loneliness. And right as the thought of how alone you feel enters your mind, you spot the light up ahead, and you and the panther, followed by the rest of the party, begin to head towards it. There's laughter. You feel the warmth of the flames and the warmth in your heart. You hear voices you can never forget, and you see faces you have dearly missed. To the rest of you, uh, there is simply a group of Firbolgs seated together in a semicircle, sharing drinks and stories, but to Brooke, uh, this is a moment of reprieve from the war. Weapons on the ground, no burdens on your heart, unbroken bonds that still guide you to this day, your most precious memory. As you get closer, the rest of the party soon realizes that one of the Firbolgs in this vision is Brooke himself. It took a few seconds to recognize him, as he looks far younger than the man you know today. His face is smooth, his muscles less developed, and he's laughing with a joy in his eyes that he has never expressed in your presence. Um, Dennis, do I have your permission to show them? Of course. Okay. Let me just pack this up. Clear the table. And... Oh, jeez. Oop. Oh. <laughs> oh. What? Oh. Wait, that's a young brook. Oh. Incredible. That what is a very young brook. What? Boat? Boat. Yeah, that, that, is, that Boat. is the artist. <laughs> <laughs> that is the artist who I commissioned this from. Wow. <laughs> wow. Good job, Boat. <laughs> really cool. uh, uh -huh. Where where did you find boat? Since we're doing this on the stream, we need to promote this guy. Yes, promote boat. <clears throat> yes. Right. Boat. Is, is this a art, art station? Twitter? No, no, no. It's like a friend of mine. Let me find the Twitter handle. <laughs> boat the goat. Yeah, boat the goat. Uh, promote I, the boat goat. Uh, the goat boat. Uh, the goat boat. <laughs> 
I need to find the Twitter. God damn it. <laughs> mechanical boat goat. Uh, <laughs> that's the next machines we're fighting. Yeah. <laughs> one second, one second, one second. For the, the next time you are in the uh, uh, river. Dra dragon wagons, number one competitor. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two neighboring towns looking right, right at one another. <laughs> okay, I, I found the Twitter. I found the Twitter. Okay. <laughs> It is at the boat lord. At, at the, the boat, lord. boat lord. Is it all one word? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. This wonderful artist can only recommend good friend <laughs> of mine. Dennis has said it is art for uh, since August. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. It's beautiful. It's after I got into making minis for all my <laughs> NPCs. <laughs> On Hero Forge, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that is the scenery you see. Oh, Beautiful. I'm glad you're happy. Yep. <laughs> I'm glad you will continue to be happy. Yep. For the remainder of this stream. It's over, right? Mm. <laughs> That's uh, the dream. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dream. As you watch the scene before you, you realize that you can't quite understand anything that is being said. Everything is a bit muffled, as if you were underwater, and time seems time seems to be slowing down. Soon, nothing is moving, and no one is talking. The flames are frozen in place. The brook from the past, and the woman who was sitting next to him, seemed to have vanished. The rock the two of them were sitting on is empty. Uh, the panther that's been with you this whole time, Brooke, um, approaches the campfire, climbs onto the rock, and sits there, taking her place and looking at you. Oh. I think... Brooke will go towards the rock and sit next to the panther right where he was sitting in the imagery, imagery right before that. Mm -hmm. You are compelled to move there, to sit where you once did. It feels right. And for some reason, the panther that's there next to you, its presence, her presence also feels right. Um. Uh. Telix, Pip, can, can you come? Uh. Oh, okay. I'm just around the fire here. I mean, you, you can understand and talk to animals, right? Oh. Yes. Uh, yes. Am I still able to? How long does your spell last? Uh, ten minutes. Uh, I can cast it. You'd have to minutes. recast it. Alright, I'll do that. Um, and you, you cast a spell, you feel it take hold. Um, even just glancing at your horse, I stayed back, uh, stayed a little back with the others. Uh, you know, you'd be able to understand it. Um, and as you, uh, what do you say to the panther? Um, I think, I think our friend here needs to know what to do next. Uh. The, from the panther comes out this, this, um, noise, its voice, um, almost like a, a meow, far deeper, and it feels sad. Uh, you can you can feel that uh, from almost the tone, but it doesn't have any meaning to you, Talix, nor does it mean anything to Pip. Oh. I think that's up to you, Brooke. Did she say something? It was more like a feeling. I, uh, 
can't understand exactly. I... He will let out a big, loud sigh and then put one hand carefully around the panther. She leans into your body. Mm. If my instinct is right and you are who I think you are. Just know that who that I missed you a lot. And I hope that no matter where you are right now, you're doing okay. And then he probably goes in into the hug completely. It's a pleasant feeling. Uh, the panther herself, of course, feels just soft and warm, but uh, it's more than that. There's this disconnection that you feel somewhere in some form. Um, this isn't just an animal you've come across today is someone you've known for a very long time. <laughs> you hug the panther for a while. She leans into the hug, um, feels heavy, until eventually, once you let go of her, um, she pulls back a little bit, and the panther nods. It doesn't feel like a, a gesture that a normal animal would do. It's a nod. She understood what you said. He is a bit surprised and then he takes his uh, garf headband, not headband, but the thing he wears around his The neck. bandana? Yeah, the bandana. And then tries to put it around her. I took care of it. This is yours. Do you want it back? You're beginning to... Now that you're uh, paying attention, the way this panther is, uh, is expressing... Um, expressing herself, uh, it feels very human-like. Uh, um, eyes at first wide with wonder and then with recognition. Um, once the bandana is firmly around her neck, she uh, hops down from the rock and uh, uh, does a few a few circles around you uh, excitedly. Um, and then, looking back at you, um, her expression just hardens a little bit more, and she uh, she trots over back towards you, sits down, and pushes her neck into one of your hands. Do you want me to take it again? The panther nods. <laughs> I probably know the answer to this, but do you only exist here? The panther looks at you, opens its mouth, there is a few seconds where she's just motionless. Um, and then uh, closes her mouth, seems uh, conflicted. And then she sticks her tongue out. And uh, on it, you can see tattooed a symbol of two panther heads. Um... A symbol you've seen many times before, and that you yourself carry. If you pay attention to Brooke's expression, you can see a moment of... probably realization. And... He's first a bit confused, and then lowers his head takes back the bandana and puts it around his neck. Um, 
I think I understand. Well... She takes her place back onto the rock. Uh, he looks to the others. He looks at Wiz. How long do I have? Um, Wiz looks up at the sky. Mm, well... A little? I think he goes back into the big hug and lowers his voice and says, Ah, I said this before. I've missed you so much, man. Even though I haven't been able to tell you this yet, but you're definitely the best thing that has ever happened to me. And then probably stays in that motion. The panther will remain uh, in your hug for as long as, as the vision of the campfire remains. There comes a moment when you blink and you realize you're back uh, under the pink tree. Although uh, you're sitting down and the panther is still there. She didn't fade away with everything else. <laughs> I think he looks back at Wiz. Uh, you said that usually people are upset at you and you do everything wrong. I would like to say thank you for giving me this opportunity. <gasps> really? He nods. Oh, this, this feels very nice. Avis uh, excitedly climbs onto the tree. Um, disappears from you. You're left on your own, but you, you do hear him uh, uh, laughing to himself. Uh, Somewhere above you. It takes a moment and then looks to the others. Takes a deep breath and... Well, whenever you guys are ready. I'm ready for the next. You, uh, you really looked happy, Brooke. He does smile, which fades after a short while. Let's just say this was a good dream. When the smile fades, the panther pushes her forehead in, uh, against his side. I know. And he puts his hand on her head again. You're Viz. left to your own devices for a while, so yeah, you can talk however long you'd like. Viz is not even here. Oh, Viz isn't here. I mean, yeah, he's on top of the tree. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Viz. Can I ask you something? There's silence for a while, and then eventually here. What? Do you remember your family? Uh-huh. Do you know where we could find him? Nope. You don't know where your home was? Eventually he climbs down from the tree, dangling upside down from one of the branches. Mm. Nope. <sighs> I don't think I had one. Like, uh, like, you know, and he points at Pip. Like, one that he has? I don't think I ever had that. It's, um... I was always under the sky. Spend a lot of time with animals. Mm. Mm. There were birds. A lot of them. 
I just thought, do you, do you speak with them? Like this one? Uh, I speak with all of them. He crosses his arms, a bit of a like proud smile on his face. Ooh, except that one. And I will point at the panther. Yeah, he's uh, a little different. Oh, um, here, let me let me give these back to you. Sorry for holding on to them. It disappears into the leaves. It eventually comes back um, and places uh, a cat in Brooke's arms and a snake on the panther. The panther seems a little freaked out about this, uh, backs away, leans down on her belly, um, Cautiously, like she has her head turned as far back as possible, just watching the snake uh, slither around on her back, not doing anything to her. Those mean something to you, Brooke. I mean, I can understand the cat, and he looks at the Black Panther, but I don't. I'm not quite sure about the snake. <laughs> the panther does uh, her best impression of a shrug. <laughs> I mean... I'm not that good with all the pantheons and gods and deities, but the snake is one of them, right? Yeah, but the cat isn't. The panther is. <laughs> yeah, and the oh, panther is a big cat. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I just give people whatever they like. Oh, you did well. Yeah, you did. Thank <laughs> you, Wes. But, um, yeah, I couldn't help but hold on to these two. They're so cute. And I need to be, like, patting the snake. Which seems fine with being touched. Herb would probably also start patting the snake. Cautiously at start. Uh, the snake seems uh, just as calm as all the other animals. Um, it even it even turns its attention towards you and begins to climb onto your hand. It's it feels ticklish. Okay, well, you have enough time to give the names if you want, but, like, uh, later. Okay. The time for the next turn. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bored, so, yeah, I'd like to, um, move on to the next thing. Uh, Professor. Yes. Is the, am I being voluntold? I really, <laughs> I would really like to try to remember whatever it is that's going to happen to me here, you know? And I feel like... Well, a couple things. First, do you think you could help me with it? Uh, I could document everything, of course, and uh, if you wish, I could be more invasive and... Uh, I could somewhat linger in your mind and dig around whilst it is happening and then I could relate to you, you know, your thoughts in the moment and the feelings you experienced and such, but I know you've shown reluctance for such things in the past. I'd be willing to give it a shot. <clears throat> if you're willing, then uh, I will do uh, my utmost to catalog everything. Well... Uh, you might not be able to write it down. 
and I think he'll bloop and pull that <laughs> that magic pin, my my subclass quill thing, mm -hmm. out of my little orb. Oh, that's right. It's very little I cannot write down. Try try something real quick. I don't know. Uh, write down what you see right now. And he will. Uh, I think he's gonna pull out. Hold, I've got to have something to to write. What does he have? Like his own little journal? Uh, I can hand him mine if he needs. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, well, he'll do it okay. in your journal because that might be even better. Um, yeah, he'll he'll pop open Talix's journal to like a blank page and just start scrawling mm -hmm. down a description of our surroundings, like the big tree, the pink petals, and all that stuff. Your hand feels uh, shakier than usual. Um, you write down a description of what you're seeing, and eventually you, you go back to make sure that the grammar is all uh, correct and you didn't leave a one uh, parenthesis open without closing it, and uh, what you just wrote feels like gibberish? And sometimes it makes sense when you squint at it and you reread a sentence two, three, four times, and then uh, once you're done, it, it's gone out of your mind. Uh, for whatever reason, whatever you're writing doesn't seem to stick to the page or just stick in your head. Cool. Yeah. Your it's quill has never let you down <laughs> yeah, like this before. With the, uh, what was your name? A small one. You said that we would remember all of this, yes? Except for Talix? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it might get, like, a little blurry. But, like, the important things, you'll remember them. I think. Okay, well then. I will uh, do my best. I have a fairly solid memory. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, if... Uh... You wish for that, that is fair. Okay. I'm willing to go. Just, uh... You know, think of me kindly, whatever might happen. Please. Uh, nothing I could see would change my opinions of you. Okay. And I guess before we get sucked into it, the professor is, I guess, quote unquote, holding the spell or is ready uh, to um, cast the tech thoughts on Natalix. Okay. Uh, you can just cast the spell whenever you'd like. Uh, um. Okay. And, yeah, uh. He'll, he'll rip. Talix is sucked taking in. Because it does have a limited breaths. duration, but I don't know how fast all of this happens. So. Yeah. Mm hmm. Time seems weird here. Uh, and he's gonna pray. He's gonna hella dig, and I assume you can you can volunteer to fail, or he can force it. Uh, he'll he'll volunteer. Okay, just let me know when you are like actually casting a spell. Uh, yeah, he's <clears throat> he's gonna cast it as soon as as soon as we zoom in or whatever. Yeah, once we so, once there's no like out of this place. It's mm -hmm. not a ritual or anything. It's a it's yeah, a yeah. Massive thing. Uh, okay. <sighs> okay. Let's go. Let's just get it over with. Ah. The horse waits, leans forward just slightly. Mm -hmm. Can you roll an animal handling check? Huh. Can I? Yes, please. That actually made me lightheaded. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <clears throat> it's been a very long time since Talix has been on a horse. Uh, especially, in fact, uh, he may not have ever been on a horse without a saddle and uh, reins. Um, and he climbs on the horse and for a moment he's unsure about how to get it to move and then uh, it takes off. <clears throat> 
And at first, it's so fast that you can't help but uh, let out a bit of a scream, but um, it, then it slows down to a more comfortable speed. Uh, the rest of you are just left behind. Um, at oh. least, at least, um, at first, everything around you um, shifts a little bit as you run after the horse, and uh, you should not be able to keep up. Uh, uh, but it feels like you, you are. In fact, you're, you're gaining ground. Um, until eventually the horse uh, gently uh, slows down and trots towards uh, the, the river. And waits for you to dismount, Talix. Alright, um, yeah, he'll get off the horse. Uh, the rest of you, somehow, um, you're with them. <clears throat> um... And you see the horse uh, reaching for the water and beginning to drink. Um, Talis will just kind of, you know, pet her while she's doing this and then look around. Mm -hmm. Taking the surroundings. You look around, you can still see, uh, especially now that you're directly in front of the river, how it's uh, the... The border of it is just slowly shifting. As you're standing still, the river feels like it's moving away from you, just ever so slightly, and um, the horse ha at some point has to take a step forward to keep on drinking, and you move with it, and, and then you end up looking down. Um, and uh, that's when you notice something odd. Although you're staring down into the river, you don't see your reflection, nor the horses, nor the skies. It feels more like you're looking straight ahead at a scene unfolding before your eyes, as if you were peeking through a window. Um, the rest of you noticing that Talix is looking downward, uh, uh, you approach and you also uh, look down into the water. And each of you see enormous branches stretching across your vision, with leaves as big as you're tall. And standing on one of those branches, it's claws digging deep into the wood is a wyvern wrapped almost entirely in bulky shimmering armor. As the wyvern turns his head, you can hear the whirring mechan of mechanisms and the grinding of gears at work in his metallic suit. Despite his size, <clears throat> despite his size, his body language makes him look somewhat small. His wings are pressed protectively against his body. His Leaning away from you, his yellow eyes are narrowed and uneasy, and he's looking straight at Talix as he hisses, What do you want? Oh, uh, I, I was brought here. I, I'm not sure why. Are you... Forgive me, are you the wyvern? <sighs> Of course I'm worried, he says, seemingly answering a different question from the one you asked. He doesn't seem to be actually speaking to you, uh, but to someone you cannot see, perhaps just beyond your field of vision. Can I adjust my vision in any way? To, like, try to look down at maybe where my feet would be or anything like that in this reflected vision? Um, the vision itself is stuck. Um, you can look at the entirety of it, but you cannot control it. Oh. Uh, the wyvern continues. He's my friend. You know that. There's a pause. Then the wyvern looks away. I hate him. Yes, both. Uh, simultaneously. I hate him, and he is my friend. He has hurt me many, many times, but I have no one else. And then suddenly, Viz splashes in the water. The vision fades. He says, oh, yeah. well, well, that's not right. That, that, that wasn't meant for you. No, Hold I on. think it was. No. I need to know this. No, no, Please. it wasn't. Um, okay, what's wrong Just let me with... See. He uh, splashes his like, feet a little bit more. 
Talix will try to pick up the kid. <laughs> it's very easy to do. <laughs> Please, just show me the fishing. This, oh, I need shit. to see this. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he 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 just kicks into the air uh, as you pick him up and you set him off uh, away from the, from the river. Uh, he's protesting, just uh, yelling, "Hey, let me go! Put me down! Put me down!" Oh, okay, you put me down. This, this is this is an answer to a question that I've been asking. Um, is it still there? <laughs> yeah, you look back down uh, into the river. And at first you just see the reflection of the sky, and then uh, you see something else. But it is something different. Oh. You feel a deep, dreadful chill. And then warmth. You see the interior of a cozy wooden cabin. Multiple heavy coats hang from hooks near the entrance door. And through a window... You can see that it's snowing outside. In front of the lit fireplace, laying on its back, is a wool dog, basking in the flame's heat. Near it, in the couches and armchairs surrounding a small table, are four figures. On the, lar on the largest couch, uh, there's a man and a woman, sitting side by side. None of you have ever seen a Vidalcan outside of Pontifex, so this is your first time finding out what a person of his kind would look like in their prime. Their pale blue skin glistens in the light of the fireplace, it's smooth, <clears throat> wet and uh, free of wrinkles. The man has long black braided hair while the woman has a shaved head with elaborate purple tattoos across her scalp. And from the way that the man is po busy pouring tea for everyone, uh, you guess that this is their home. Sitting across from them, an elf with tanned skin and short copper hair speaks up. Then, it sounds like it's the only way. Talix and Pontifex both recognize him right away. You just heard the voice of Talix's father. He looks just like both of you remember him. Uh, though with elves, that's pretty much a given. His outfit looks like it's been through a lot. It's full of patches, barely holding it together, uh, painfully discolored, and one of its leaves is even singed, uh, partially burned all the way up to his, uh, to his elbow. Another voice speaks up. It's like I've been saying all along. Standing with his bare feet on one of the armchairs is a halfling that most of you have seen dozens of times. In newspapers, books, even life-size statues, though never in person. Jamuel Fleetfoot rolls his eyes and throws his hands in the air. This would have been a lot faster and a lot easier if you had just listened to me. But no, we had to hear the tales of the Kralko and seek out the wisdom of the Sildun and speak to a dragon. And now you're hearing it from the magical frog people. Well... There you have it. Are you satisfied yet? Arin sighs. So, how is this going to work? Hm, it's pretty straightforward. We get the seed, we plant it, and ta-da! Lidari is stable and will no longer crumble into the sea of chaos. Done! World saved! And how exactly are we going to get our hands on a seed of Akanath? Well, the fox has it. He will deliver it to us. You see, Arin shaking his head, unconvinced. How do you know? Why would he give it to us? He's... Uh, he's a god. Jamuel chuckles at this. <laughs> oh, getting the help of the fox will be the easy part. It's what he wants. The hard part is carrying the seed from Plurna to Lidaria. I can't do the journey myself. I, I draw too much attention. And you can't leave, so... Uh, it's gotta be someone else. But it will be fine. I'm sure the gods will find the right guy for the job. The statement is followed by a long silence. The mood in this room, serious, somber. Everyone thinking about this.
eventually, the walls begin to fade. It feels like um, your vision is uh, crumbling away. Wait, can you hear me? Hello? You yell into the river. Uh, this chuckles to himself, uh, amused by this, and then he uh, stops chuckling once uh, uh, the female Vidalkin, um, her head raising ever so slightly and looking around. It felt like a reaction to something that um, didn't happen in the vision itself. Hello? Tell, tell Arn to find me! The dog begins to bark. The Vidalkin stands up. Wait, quiet, someone is here. Jamil looks around, eyes wide, and grabs the wooden staff that was leaning against his armchair. What? Damn it! You said this place was warded! Uh, the woman uh, says back. It is. This is Aaron's son, please, please! Jamil yells, well, your word is shit! Uh, he twirls and points a staff towards the center of the room in the direction uh, of you, Talix. He yells, Is that you, Orm, you son of a bitch? Leave me alone! This is too important for you to fuck it up! The dog barks louder and there is an explosion of, right, of bright white light. The entire river you were staring into lights up and you are forced to look away. By the time the light fades, so did the vision. Looks, looks back. Is there anything left to see in the river? For as long as you stay looking at it, uh, um, all you see is uh, you and your horse's uh, reflections. And do you happen to know what that was, Viz? You look at the, at the young tiefling. He looks back at you. Uh, a bit of a like, a bit of a smile on his face, um, almost like a reassuring smile, as he confidently shakes his head. Those weren't my dreams, were they? Mm hmm. You said that. You said that about the first one. It came from someone else. Mm hmm. Can I inside check? Uh, yeah. Uh, can I as well? Yes. Or can I just help Talek? Yes, yes, you can. Does he know more than he's letting on? Mm-hmm. Uh, go can ahead and roll. roll twice? <laughs> uh, everyone who wants to roll can roll. No! No, I don't have inspiration, no! <laughs> <laughs> I've got you, I've got you! Yeah. Well, what, what, what do I, what do I glean? <laughs> um... Good, that, uh, from, from the way he just, uh, he has a bit of a, he's a kid, um, sometimes the way he expresses himself is a little off, a little weird, um, but uh, you feel like it would be pretty easy to tell, um, if a child this young was, uh, uh was lying, when they are so, uh, so little aware of their own body language and where they're looking at, um, none of you have the impression that he's lying? Or that he's trying to hide any information. He just shakes his head and shrugs. I mean, as far as I know, I was showing you your dream. That's usually what I do. Uh, but sometimes other people show up and then things go weird. And he glances at Pip. Not to make assumptions, uh, Professor, do you have any idea who those Vidalkin were? Uh, has Pontifex ever met another Vidalkin? Um, with Vidalkin being so exceptionally rare, but also being so uh, curious, uh, um, no reason why they wouldn't want to uh, get to uh, meet each other where possible. Uh, Pontifex has met uh, two before, in two separate occasions, uh, neither of them matching uh, um, the ones that uh, uh, you have just seen in the river. Uh, no. 
I've only ever met uh, two other Vedalkin and they were uh, in no relation. The only ones you met, in fact, were older than they were. And considering that you just saw both Aryan and uh, uh, Jamiel in the same room with them, um, it has to have been something that took place somewhat recently. Right, that was actually one of my questions, I guess, was uh, was because I've known Aaron for a long time. Uh, it, so I was wondering, did, you know, does he show signs of being significantly younger or significantly older? But okay, if it's like recent, Last that answers years. the question. Yeah, so, that... like that difference wouldn't even show on an elf. Uh, Could be 10 years or one year. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I wasn't thinking so small as one decade. Mm -hmm. I was thinking yeah. at, a, at a Pontifex level of time passage. And with Jamil being so famous, you know that uh, he himself is not uh, um, is not uh, uh, old. He's no mm -hmm. older than, uh, um, than uh, 50 maximum. Ah, okay. Okay, cool. So yeah, you also have his lifespan too. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, did we lose Sid? Uh, just in tabletop for some reason. Okay. I'll be back. All right. <clears throat> Oh, and they spoke about Ladaria and stuff, and that's like a relatively recent discovery, mm -hmm. so... Well, yeah, right, and they had a wool dog, uh, mm -hmm. and Unen. Mm -hmm. Unen? What? Uh, Unen. It's always U, right? Mm -hmm. Unin. The wool dogs have names now! That was also <laughs> in the in the updates. And Jamil. In the oh. Book. Yeah. What was its name? Can you spell it? It's, uh, it's what wool dogs are called. That's what Ladarians call. Um, hmm? Oh, a wool dog. I thought you said a bulldog. Oh, oh. <laughs> wool. Hmm, bulldog. Yeah, it was Jamil's sheepdog. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, we could have asked what the name was. Talek said other things on his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what priorities? <laughs> what is his name? Forget about my father. I need to know the name of your dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, Talix isn't going to speak anymore after that. If there's nothing else, he's just going to leave it at that. And I think, like, think. Pontifex is, like, silently reciting, I guess, to himself, like, a speech and, like, repeating it in his head. Uh, suppose... Like running through it a few times to try to help it, mm -hmm. like remember it. I this... suppose you would know what's going on in Talix's head. It's exactly what you'd yeah. expect. He's mm -hmm. like, uh, "What is my mission here? Why would they be involved in any way? What the fuck is going on?" Kind of thing. Uh, this is looking is between uh, uh, everyone except for Pontifex, and he seems to be counting. And then he says. Well, I think I made two people happy and two people not. <laughs> well, you have a chance at redemption, I suppose, but my hopes are not exactly high. Mm, he walks up to you, um, uh, and and he looks. He has to tilt his head so far back to look at Pontifex in the eyes, and he has his uh, his hands on his hips, thinking. Mm. No, I think you'll like this. <laughs> okay. Impress me. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, if Detect Thoughts didn't run out, he will drop that. Yeah, he's gonna, I guess, go over to the river and sit there. Um, yeah. You sit by the river and you think about it for uh, you think uh, about what just happened for a while, and then um, the cat that's been with you this whole time um, mm -hmm. eventually meows at you and looks away in the direction that the river is flowing from, and then looks at you. It feels like it it wants you to follow it. Well, curiosity is never led to anything bad, I hear so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose we shall be going for a walk. Uh, stand up. I'll lead the way, little one. 
this calls for everyone uh, making sure that no one is left behind at any point uh, um even even making sure that uh, that squeak is there's always somebody carrying his cage um and the rest of you follow as pontifex lets uh, the cat lead the way and you follow it until your footsteps sound different your boots no longer sink in the grass but they tap against wood you no longer hear the rushing river to your side it's you look down and it is it's gone <clears throat> instead the the smell of old parchment uh, puts you at ease walls rise up from the ground and enclose you and the party you find yourselves in the middle of a large room covered from floor to ceiling in shelves filled with books and scrolls Everything neatly labeled and sorted. Two desks, each with two chairs behind them, are placed face to face in the middle. And two people stand near them, one leaning onto some papers, the other drying her eyes with a handkerchief. All of you recognize these two. You just saw them. The two Vidalkin from Talix's vision in the river. They look almost exactly the same uh, their clothes are different um they are they're wearing perhaps what must be the most unique robes you have ever seen with layers upon layers of red and blue and purple silk uh, so shiny that it almost seems to be glowing uh, in Talix's vision they had more um, uh, normal casual attire um and uh, warmer um you watch, um, the woman is sobbing for a few seconds until um, her voice quivering, she speaks up. So, this is it then. He looks at her, replies, yeah, this is it. She sighs and brings her attention to the bookshelves uh, all around them. Our life's work, he says, someone will find it. Uh, the harmless studies and research. You burned the rest? He nods. Every single page. Good. Nobody else can find out. This knowledge destroys the mind, the spirit, and the heart. His eye has a strange weight to it. If there is one thing we have learned from this... It's that there are some things in this world that are better left undiscovered. Both of them now have tears in their eyes. <clears throat> the man reaches for a small wooden box on one of the desks, lifts it up, and takes a deep breath. Uh, the woman asks, Are you ready? He shakes his head after a moment, his expression solemn, yet pained. I could never be ready for this, but it must be done. Pontifex deserves a normal life, and we can't provide it anymore. From the box, he pulls out a pyramid-shaped gemstone. Then the two of them turn and leave the room. The rest of you chase after them, traveling down a long hallway with nearly a dozen closed doors, until you step into a bright, cheerful room, in sharp contrast with the solemn mood. <clears throat> the ceiling is painted with the colors of the Sea of Chaos at night, and the stars are actually shining. A bookshelf shaped like a tree is, uh, for the most part, still empty, and a handful of plushies hug the walls. The couple steps towards a baby in a wooden cradle. The, one, the woman picks him up and wraps him in a blanket, while the man holds up the gemstone and says, I wish to know what the universe is made of. A colorful glow envelops the gemstone, then fades. He places the gem in the hand of the, in the, hand of the baby, who is immediately compelled to find out what it tastes like. <laughs> the man says, I hope that Pontifex never speaks those words in his lifetime. The woman asks, what will happen if he does? He caresses one of her cheeks. Then he will find us. 
And we will tell him. The two of them embrace gently around the baby, sobbing silently as their now old son watches them from a dream. Uh, is there more? You wait, you look back towards Viz. He shrugs. And then um, a movement catches your eye. Uh, the woman's body quivers. She pulls away from the hug and uh, looks around. Her expression now slightly perplexed. Worried, even. The man asks, what is it? Nothing, she replies. We should finish our preparations. Here, take Pontifex. I'll be right with you. As the man leaves the room, passing right through uh, the rest of you, uh, who are merely ghosts in this room, the tattooed woman stares, stays where she is. After a few seconds, she calls out. They can feel your presence, whoever you are. Though there may be many of you, it would be a mistake to underestimate my magic. Leave my house. Now. I think... I think Pontifex starts to, like, walk towards her. And, uh, if he can get close enough, he's gonna try to, like, put his hand on her face. She looks around, seemingly uh, unable to um, tell exactly where you are. To the left, to the right, she uh, steps back uh, unknowingly towards you. Um, you reach for her face, and the moment you uh, you touch it, um, she leaps as if she felt the touch, and she brandishes a wand that she had on her belt and points it at you, and there's a flash of light. And you're back beneath the tree. Not in any pain, just back here. Our house. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna, like, kind of sit there, like, shaking a little bit, uh, and then he's going to try to reach and, and fish around for, uh, for his little prism. You find it. It's how it always is. You hold it up and, uh, um, the sun, whether it is the real sun or one just uh, made up by uh, a, a child's imagination, uh, shines through it. You spin it, looking at how the the color of the light changes depending on which side the light comes out, uh, comes into and out of. Yeah, he'll uh, just kind of stare at it for a moment and then, like Wait. clutch it in his hand. He's going to keep it there. He's not going to put it away. We might be better off if you're going to do it. Maybe wait till we're back out of this place. Uh, yes, of, of course. It just seems... change things. And uh, he's repeating that that phrase in his mind so that he will try not to forget it. Mm -hmm. The phrase that he's never supposed to say. It feels almost like, uh, um, like when your uh, your your pen is running out of ink and you're tracing the words over and over in the page until more than having written them with ink, it's more that they're carved into the parchment. You feel like you could never forget them. Right, so, uh, that's all of us, yes? 
this lets out a very satisfied sigh and a little tired too. Um, he sits down with his back against the tree, uh, his hands united uh, uh, behind his head, and he nods. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, that is all six of you. Excuse me? I uh, count five. One, two, three, he begins pointing at each of you. Four, five, six. And at number four, he was pointing at a panther. Oh. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I, I don't matter or anything. You don't get to dream. You don't get to live. The earth begins to shake. Oh shoot! I'm sorry. The kid, the kid stands up. Um, the leaves begin to fall from the tree until it is entirely naked, and you're standing in this sea of pink leaves, and they feel heavy. They feel so heavy, like you you cannot move through them. You cannot lift your feet, and they keep falling and falling until you're beginning. You're completely enveloped. You cannot see anything except pink, and you just hear this voice. Wait. This <laughs> no, go on. Sorry. Ah, uh, you hear this, this, this voice, uh, the child's voice just yelling, Well, you're ugly! <laughs> <laughs> no, you! <laughs> <laughs> did Talix yell out, wait, like for real? Yeah, yeah, he did, but, well, okay, does it, does it work? Um... Talix, you feel something uh, grabbing one of your wrists, and you're pulled out from the leaves. Um, you can't, you can't help it, but yelp in, surpri yelp in surprise uh, as the kid is somehow holding you. You don't feel your feet touching the ground. Uh, it's just a child hanging with one hand around one of the branches and the other just around your wrist. What? What do you want? Oh. Uh. I'm going to drop you. I, okay, I'm going to drop you. I just want to say thank you. Uh, and is there anything we can do for you in in the other world to repay you? Wait, really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, the rest of you. You had begun to be unable to breathe. Um, every time you tried, you just... You have a mouthful of dry leaves. Um that are beginning to crumble and turn black, and then suddenly they're, they're gone. You're back on, on the grass. Uh, the tree is normal. The leaves are back on its branches. Um, the child is holding a talix by the wrist, and he uh, gently lowers him back to the ground. Uh, he climbs down from the tree and looks, looks at talix in the eyes. Well, that would be nice. Um... Okay, can you water my grave? Yeah. Do you want me to plant anything there? Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. I, I don't know what. Just something? Make it look nice? Okay. I'll look to Tekka. Um, maybe help me remember that. I will. Wes, do you remember your place of rest? Oh, it's right here. He like gently taps one foot on the on the tree. I thought as much. Thank you so much. Hmm. It feels nice to be appreciated. Well, off you go. And you feel yourselves falling. The ground no longer beneath your feet. Um, for seconds. And then minutes. Or maybe for just a moment. You open your eyes. You're beneath the same tree. For a moment you're not really sure what happened. But as you look around you realize the surroundings are different. There are no other trees around. The river is gone. The upside down waterfall is gone. 
you just recognize the normal hills uh, to the west of Simulielon. You don't really remember getting here. Or... You do. A little bit. And although the path you took to get here is unclear, the dream that you all shared is vivid in your minds. Except for Talix. The only thing he remembers is getting to the tree and trying to fall asleep. He feels like he didn't. Is the panther still there? No. None of the animals are. And Squeak is no longer in its cage. Uh, in fact, he's... Uh, uh, was he uh, a rat? Uh, While yes. you guys were walking, then he's a rat and he's free. <clears throat> I think Brooke would look for the panther, and once the realization hits that the panther isn't there anymore, the smile he had after the dream goes away into his normal face expression. Aww. Did we all fall asleep? Strange. Um, <laughs> Talix, do you remember what is the last you? I assume I don't have any sensation at all. Like, well, I, as far as I know, we were just walking. Mm hmm. Yeah. You vaguely remember perhaps reaching the tree. It's a little blurry. It just feels like you're very groggy from perhaps having overslept. At the moment, I don't even really remember how we got here. I feel kind of cloudy. We made a promise that I will now fulfill. Pontifex, will you tell Talix what happened? Uh, do I still clearly remember? Yes. Some details are slightly fuzzy, but it's more about things about the, the locations or, or every item in every room you've seen, but uh, everything that matters is very vivid. It might just be the most, the most clear dream that you've ever woken up from, but you still feel like it would be best to write it down, just in case. Okay, yeah, he, uh, then he will, you know... Rather than just telling you it, it may be better if I write it. And, and as you uh, does, reach for, <laughs> <laughs> as you um, as you reach for your backpack, you also notice a weight on your side. And sure mm. enough, uh, the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria is right there where it was before. Do we have like a channel that I want to put this into? Talent? What are you? Oh, you're like sharing. Uh, yeah, I literally wrote sharing. down everything. <laughs> well, oh, there, I, I, there is there is no need. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, share, share. Oh, but well, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> you can throw, uh, just throw it in general. That's fine. There you go. I put it in the roleplay channel. Um, okay, yeah. And does that involve uh, like all the basic things? Is it skipping anything? <laughs> what do you, What do you mean? Or like if there's any detail that he's avoiding to mention to Talix. No. Uh, no, he he made a promise. He is dumping all of it. Uh, let me also write down the spelling of the names that you have heard. Because, um, of course, yeah, I, I went by that. I don't know if I missed anything, but I wrote down um, everything. Yes, that's okay. So, uh, 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 oh god. Here it is. So... The the names he mentioned, he talked about the tales of the Krelko, the wisdom of the Sildun, um, and then later he yelled at someone he called Orm. Orm, okay, not Orm. Uh, and sorry, it was the wisdom of the Sildun, and then what was the Krelko thing? The Tales, Tales of the, the Krelko. Krelko. Oh, 
when I wonder if Orm is Metal Man. Yeah, what were the initials? It's O T H. Mm hmm. I mean, the O fits. <laughs> yeah. O first name, maybe? And it was, was it O dot T H? Yes. Yeah. 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 Orm Thunderhugger. The homie. <laughs> Orm the homie. <laughs> the Orm the Hulk. Thing. Um, and you're you're mm. you're like writing this down and uh, narrating it to Talix. Uh, no, I think he is uh, just put like focusing on writing this down with like experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, like I, I even think he like takes Talix's journal from him and then <laughs> writes all of this down with his magic mm -hmm. pen. Uh, Talix's journal looks uh, uh, normal this time. You can see the things he has written before, the sketches that were there before. Um, you don't see. Any of the scribbles you tried to write earlier. Okay, yeah. Uh, in uh, terms of then... you guys' equipment, everything is normal and where it should be, um, except for Pip's rock. Just the one. Oh, the rock is actually gone. Brooke, will you look after Pip? Um, Brooke was probably sunken in his thoughts. <clears throat> but once you say his name, he shakes out of it. Yeah, of course. And he walks over to Pip, kneels down. Are you going to be all right? Can, can we go home now? Of course. Everyone ready to go? Not yet. Well, uh, Tekka is going to look for flowers. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably use his water skin to right below the tree. Is he looking for any particular kind of flower? If possible, he will look for maybe two or three of different colors, but yeah, just depends on how much variety there is. It's strange. You find them easily, almost like you knew where to look. You go from one patch of grass to the other in a straight line, finding red flowers, blue flowers, orange. You think they'll look nice. You didn't need to, to work for it. It's more like they came to you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> after planning them, I think he sort of lowers his head recounts his memory of the dream and then to feel. we can go there it's much thing speak about in time as you um, begin to stand up collect your belongings Talix, the flowers that were in your backpack, they have wilted. Uh... What? Uh, I look up at the, at the sun. The sun is rising, which... Feels a, a little odd. Um, you must have slept through the night, you suppose?
This is a bit of a stretch. Because <laughs> I don't have keen mind. But does anything look off about where the sun is rising from? From what we saw before? I don't know if I could... Roll a survival Probably. check. Okay. Well... Yeah. Although you... You don't recognize this location. As in, uh, the, the, the memories of how you got here are still a little fuzzy. Um, but... You look around at the hills, you ask Pontifex for <laughs> for his map, and uh, you guys try to pinpoint your location. Uh, you don't think there's anything off about the direction the sun is rising from. You think you have um, a reasonable idea of where you should be. You should still be somewhere west of Simlielon and not too far. I... I'm not sure why the magic failed. It's not just that, this... They look like they've been out for, for days, but the magic should have protected them for... some period of time that I'm not going to specify. <laughs> <laughs> just in case I'm going to contradict something that we're going to find out later. <laughs> uh, I mean... We can just get new flowers, right? This is very strange. And what happened with you all? You all look... Well, you can tell me on the road. <laughs> and I'll read this. Assuming... Are you done, Professor? Yeah, yeah, he he finished and... He's like, okay. you know, changing colors and stuff on the on the page. But yeah, he's <laughs> he's done. He he probably finished like way before this conversation even finished. He's quick. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I need to figure some things out. Uh, Brooke, can you lead us home? Sure. You wanna help me, Pip? Pip just slowly looks up at you from from having been staring into the middle distance for a very long time. It just looks at you blankly. <clears throat> All right, we've been um, going to the Maybe I should help. Here, I'll, I'll deal with this later. I... Okay. Um, is Alex reading and walking? No, he'll he'll put it away. He'll he'll just assist Brooke. Okay. So we I don't just wanted us. to distract Pip. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Well, Talix doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, and eventually you begin journeying eastward again. Uh, Talix, you're. Unsure why everyone is acting weird, but uh, you make sure to collect more flowers for Brooke. Place them back in your backpack. Um, you don't think you traveled more than a, a, a day, perhaps, from Simulator, so surely these ones will stay fresh. And then eventually you just sit down I'll for. I'll still protect them. Okay, yeah. Try to. Eventually you'll sit down for a quick break, and uh, uh, well, everyone is resting their legs. Uh, Talis, you can look at uh, the notes that Pontifex left you. Um, similarly, Pontifex, you're, you make sure that uh, um, the Jamul is doing all right. Yeah. Yeah, jeez. Oh. <laughs> Bye! Um, oh yeah, we're not gonna Party need charms. that. Again. Yeah, I, I need to let you take your minis. Hold on, let me place it back. <laughs> uh, Professor, by any chance, can you ask Jamuel maybe how long we've been laying there? Yes, that was one of my questions for him. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bring out... Uh, 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 uh. 
Wah. All right. And as soon as you open the book, uh, uh, just immediately ink collects itself uh, into a series of words, uh, and you can almost uh, you can almost uh, hear the worry uh, just through the, the how frantically uh, the words are formed on the pages. Why would we be? How long were we out? I don't know, am I hungry? Oh, uh, no, not really. Um, a little, but you haven't had breakfast today. It's slightly peckish. Uh, no, I don't know, that's the question. Hey, uh, Jemuel says that we were only out for a little bit. Like, uh, like three days. Three days? Uh, apparently. Which <laughs> 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 is a little bit relative to him. Talix <laughs> leans back in his chair. I, I could hear that. <laughs> oh, I was sitting up. <laughs> Okay, uh, did anything happen in those three days? I, did, I don't well, feel particularly I, I hungry be, or dehydrated. What? Yes, you would assume we are corpses at, at that point. That is strange. <laughs> uh, no sleep talking, no stirring, no visitors, nothing. I need details. Jamil, you cannot play with this. What is the name? It's something. This is important. Or who said it? Rather. Doubly so. What was the name? You wrote it down right here. I don't know what it means. Did you, uh... Is, was it just a name? Was there context? The age... Um... No more ink forms on it. No more words are written after that last question. You did write down that someone Jamil didn't like? Uh, yeah. You know, I was frantically trying to keep details to a minimum to preserve the memory, but I, I recall uh, in a conversation, uh, Jamil mentioned that he did not want this Orm individual to be involved in that. He did not want him to... Uh, I believe the verbiage was to fuck it all up. 
Yeah, it sounded like he has a poor history with this Orm fellow. Yeah. Are you okay, Jemuel? Just you know, uh, give me an emoji. <laughs> if you don't want to talk, close the book <laughs> by yourself. Perhaps he will in time. <clears throat> you see the ink swirling around uh, the page. Some form of hesitation. Um, when it writes again, uh, you can almost feel this strange sense of, uh, well, something is wrong with the book. Whatever it's feeling, you cannot peer into it. Um, it's a book. There is no body language to be read. There's just a very very slow movement of the ink it goes to the right to the left there's some thinking some uncertainty You care to elaborate, you have uh, the, the, at the very least my undivided attention, but I, I'm afraid this Orm name may have triggered something. You. The one who has sent these machinations at us. that as it may, we all knew the dangers when we signed up for this, when we found this book. You. Uh, Not necessarily. We had our chance to leave. Jamil. You wanted me to plant this seed here. Oh boy. That's where we'll end the session. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Close the book. Close the book. Shut the fuck. Oh, before anyone else can see that. <laughs> Yikes! So that's all we got for a certain name, wasn't it? Uh, one. So one Orm. Order. Was Jamuel's dog all along? Yeah. <laughs> for real. <laughs> we got we got a semicircle for the for the start of the dog's name. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, figured it oh, out. Oh he didn't want Orm to fuck it all up. The dog. <laughs> we have joking. the dog in the book. <laughs> oh, we have we haven't talked about this with you, have we, Matt? <laughs> what? There's a, no. There's a, there's a theory we've 
We've been uh, talking about this for a while, actually. <laughs> that this is not Jamuel in the book, that this is the dog It's in just the, the normal earthquake sensing, uh, it's very it's good sense of sense smell. Of smell. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Wow. Remembers meeting people, but never remembers speaking with them. Remembers seeing dogs, but doesn't remember owning one. Um, wow. Yeah, you guys have been thinking that one. That, yeah, we, that we've, thought we've never gone deep occurred on this. to me. We've gone deep on this. But we don't know for sure. We'll have to find out no. next time. And Jamil, according to literally everyone, is a giant asshole. <laughs> and, this, and the one we have in the book is not. asshole would yeah. say, I don't want to bring my dog because he will fuck it all up. <laughs> oh, mm. And his dog died. <laughs> The dog fucked it all up. He was right. <laughs> Genius. He knew. I did not know that Jamil was a divination wizard. <laughs> I have heard of these halfling divination wizards, but <laughs> I've heard they were very popular even, but I had never assumed. If I can well, add uh, I take onto it this, this was uh, meant to be. I I think that this was meant to be Jamiel in the book, and the dog was absorbed by mistake because he something fucked happened it all when up. they died together. Maybe I don't know. That's um, what I thought at first. All I wanted to add to this is that at the end of session one, it might have been off stream, but like <laughs> right as session ended, Sid said, "Hey." Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it be crazy if this was the dog? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was the first one to call it. That's right. Oh, that guy is a divination wizard. <laughs> oh, we already knew that. <laughs> Melting glass. <laughs> Melting glass. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find that moment, actually. So we have VODs. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless it was post stream shutdown. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been very lazy about up uploading them to YouTube, but we're I'm, I'm with Jason's help. We're finally catching up. Yeah, um, we have all if, the you can, on if you can prioritize this session for me, <laughs> that would be great. I've been watching the vods with Twitch. Yeah. yeah, I usually I yeah. usually listen to them on um, on my way to work or back from work, and yeah. the and the Twitch app is not my favorite. Mm. Fair. All right. Okay, yeah. We can go ahead and put this yeah, up for... on listed and mm -hmm. send you the yeah, link. Right away. Yeah, right Yeah, please. Do everything else in between. Get it published before we put this on YouTube. Yeah, uh, and on that note, we're going to end the stream. Dude. Ooh. Awesome what? session. Holy yes. crap. Thanks for anyone who's watching, which is really sad because I think a moment ago we had a two viewer count and now I'm checking it was four and then I changed it and it's five and now it's back down to four. It's all, it's just you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't on there, so... Yeah, it's, there's at least someone else. <laughs> to anyone who's viewing now or viewing in the future, in the this future? was a doozy of a session, and please check Holy the VOD crap. for this one. <laughs> yeah. All right, I will, I will let you go. That's... No, I'm not Bye leaving. stream! Oh, okay, well, <laughs> we I'm, I'm just gonna say... Stream. Uh, we, we bye stream! We have stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> bye! Bye, bye stream! Bye! bye. bye.